Tonight, two pitchers face their former teams in an interleague matchup from downtown San Diego. Jesse Hahn, acquired in a trade with the Padres this offseason, has shown he belongs in the A's rotation. The tall right-hander has an ERA at 3.5 and, and has given the Athletics quality starts all year long. East Bay native Tyson Ross has become a consistent fixture in the San Diego rotation since the A's traded him to the Padres in 2012. Tonight, the two go head-to-head -head from Petco Park. Ace Padres, game one of four, next. The A's road trip goes from Anaheim to San Diego. We're at Petco Park, and this is the first interleague game of the year for the Athletics. Interesting pitching matchup. It's Tyson Ross for the Padres and Jesse Hahn for the Athletics. It's the first of a four-game series, two here in San Diego and then two in Oakland. It's the A's and the Padres coming up on Comcast Sportsnet, California. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to Oakland A's Baseball, along with Ray Fossey. I'm Glenn Kuyper. And, Ray, we usually talk about the A's at this point in the show, but uh, it's all about Bud Black today. Yeah. Very interesting. The Padres fired Bud Black today as their manager after eight and a half seasons. Yeah, it's too bad to see any manager fired. Nobody wants to see that happen. Bud Black was a very good pitcher in the American League, did a great job. He also was kind of a calming effect, an effect for this ball club. But, unfortunately, for the Padres, they did not live up to the expectations that the Padres thought they would, especially in the offseason of what they acquired, and it's unfortunate. Usually what happens, the manager is the one that takes the fall. Bud Black is out of a job. I'm sure he'll find another one. Interesting pitching matchup. Jesse Hahn, a former Padre, Tyson Ross, a former A. They're going to square off today. A couple of good young right-handers. Yeah. Well, Jesse Hahn, this is the first NLA game, as you mentioned. So for Hahn, he gets to put the bat in his hand. He's been taking batting practice. And as far as Tyson Ross, six foot six, he wore the number 66 in Oakland because he grew up on 66th Avenue. <laughs> All those things factored in. But unfortunately for him, there was not as good as he's pitched for the Padres. A lot of sliders here. A good sinking fastball. But I know Jesse Hahn is looking forward to swinging the bat tonight. Let's just hope he can bunt. All right. So interleague baseball. Ball is coming up here on Comcast Sportsnet California. But up next, we're going to head back inside the A's pregame live studios and then back to San Diego for game one of this four game series. It's the A's and the Padres.
Try Jack in the Box. Taste the new black pepper cheeseburger today, only at Jack in the Box. And by Toyota, the full-time automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. Welcome back to Petco Park in downtown San Diego. It's been a while since the A's have been here, but it's a very nice ballpark, and we're looking forward to the two games here and then the two games back in Oakland on Wednesday and Thursday. And that'll be the four game set with the A's and the Padres. Game time weather for tonight presented by the Santa Cruz Beach Boardwalk. Get to the beach. The admission free boardwalk is now open daily. It's a cool 68 degrees. So again, cool in Anaheim, Ray, yeah. and kind of the same type of weather down here in San Diego. It's called no sun. What did you call it? June? June gloom. June gloom. Well, we saw it in Anaheim. Saw the sun yesterday. Saw the sun briefly today. But the gloom has come back tonight in San Diego. It's better than humidity, though. I oh, yes. Say I agree. I agree. And I, I think, uh, and, and the one thing I always remember, Kite, when you play on the West Coast, in the Bay Area, especially, or down in San Diego, the teams back on the East can't wait to come here in the summertime because it's so cool and refreshing. Conversely, you go back after being out here, and you have to deal with the heat and humidity of the Midwest and the East Coast. It really takes a lot out of you. So if you guys get to sit and enjoy tonight, as you mentioned, the first interleague play game. Sonny Gray asked the skipper, hey, you going to use me for a pinch runner tonight? And I think Bob Melvin said it best. I use you as a pinch runner. I pack my bags. <laughs> you do not want to take your ace or your staff and put him on the base pass. Sonny will not hit in these first two games as the A's embark on their interleague schedule for the first time. Here's the lineup tonight for the Athletics. Billy Burns will lead off in center. Eric Sogard at second. Josh Reddick in right. Ben Zobris in left. Vogt will catch and hit fifth. Laurie hits sixth. Muncy hits seventh and plays first base. Marcus Simeon drops down to the A spot. And the pitcher, Jesse Hahn, will hit ninth. Well, the battery of former Athletics. That is Derek Norris behind the plate. But Tyson Ross is the pitcher. Tyson, of course, six foot six and a good pitcher. He throws the ball hard. And as we talked about the sliders, and we will see, I'm sure, a few of those, but not wearing the familiar 66 that he wore as a member of the athletics. But for Tyson Ross, getting traded in the National League, kind of a change of scenery for him, and he's pitched well. Got a younger brother that uh, made a trip to be able to watch him make his major league debuts. But Tyson Ross, one of the good guys, and now pitching for the Padres. Defensively behind Tyson Ross for San Diego, Justin Upton is in left field, Will Venable is in center. Matt Kemp is in right. Young Hervis Salarte at third. Alexi Amarista at short. Corey Spangenberg is the second baseman. And Yadder Alonzo at first with Derek Norris doing catching. So Tyson Ross finishing up his warm-up tosses. And as Ray mentioned, this is the first interleague game for the A's, but not the case for the Padres. This is their fourth yeah. interleague series. They're three and five. They've played Houston, Seattle, and Anaheim with the Seattle series being just a two game set. But so this is their fourth interleague series, but the A's doing it for the first time. When well, you think about uh, 15 teams in each league, so you have an interleague game every series. And that's the interesting thing with the A's on June the 15th playing their first ever, at least this year. But uh, they will do it against the Padres and a familiar pitcher in Tyson Walsh. So Burns steps in. A's wearing the green tops tonight. Padres in the all white. And Tyson Ross kicks. And the first pitch is tapped. Fair. Norris to first one out. Well, that didn't take long. And the ball went about three feet. And but Ray, we're underway. And Bob Melvin is going to check to see if the ball ended up in fair territory. And you know, he's looking at the line, and I don't know what kind of view we're going to have of this, but Derek Norris pounced on it quickly, and, oh, he got it behind the line, didn't he? Well, it did look like yeah. it. Yeah. It would be an imaginary yeah, exactly. line that goes through the batter's box toward home plate. That It's just the part where the line doesn't continue all the way through. Maybe it should yeah. for a play like that. Exactly, because that had to be the interpretation of Mike DeMuro, the home plate umpire. To make that call. So Demiro is the home plate umpire. Trip Gibson at first, Brian Gorman at second, and Humari is at third. So here's Sogard. And the interesting thing about the play with Derek Norris, and while he does throw well, is we'll talk about his success throwing out base runners, but he didn't have to throw the ball the first. He threw him down the first base 
Down the right field line. How embarrassing would that be? But all he had to do was pick it up and tag. Billy Burns, because I think Billy thought it was foul all the way. But Derek Norris having a great season. Getting a chance to play every day, something that he has always wanted to do. He talked about it last year with the A's, and he's doing it now. Hit hard into the seats. And the count two and two. Now, this is what we're talking about. Watch where he picks it up. Now, spinning behind home plate, that's okay, but it's where it landed where he picked it up. And what Mike DeMiro pointed to Bob Melvin, he pointed the imaginary line like you mentioned. Yeah. It just so happens there's a spot in the batter's box. It's probably what, Ray, as you look at maybe two feet where yeah. the chalk line does not right. extend all the way to home plate, and it's right in that area where the ball was. 3 2 pitch outside, and it's a one out walk for Eric Soto. Tyson Ross, throughout his career, has had a tendency to walk batters. Walk a lot, strike out yeah. a lot. And there's Dave Roberts. The interim manager for the Padres, if you're just joining us, Bud Black was fired today after eight and a half seasons. And you could. A bit of a strange feeling around the ballpark. I mean, Bud Black's been here a long, long time. I think it's got to be very tough because Dave Roberts brought in as a bench coach for Bud Black and. You know, you meet with the front office and then find out, oh, by the way, we're going to make a change and we want you to step in in the role as an interim manager. I think your point well taken is an interim for how long? Interim can mean anything, right? It can be a day. Sure. The rest of the season. That's exactly right. <laughs> you know, so we will see what happens tomorrow in game two. Well, there's a lot of rumors flying around, and you don't want to dive into rumors too deep, but it sounds like they're going to start interviewing people immediately yeah. for the job the rest of the year. Right. So, in fact, the Padres came out this afternoon and said, we will hire an interim manager in the next 24 to 48 hours. A one to Reddick is grounded to short. Amarista has trouble getting it out, so he flips it to first, and they get Reddick. Reddick thought maybe Alonzo took his foot off the bag, but Amarista wanted to go to second, but he just juggled a little bit, and then he went across to first. Uh, Cat, to your point of what Reddick thought, Bob Melvin's out. And right there started to throw and then flat footed through across the diamond and we'll see. As Reddick pointed to first base and they're going to take a look and I think they decided. Not going to check it. So two outs now with Sogard. At first. Highest ground ball percentage this season. Tyson Ross is. Number three. Brett Anderson How about that. You're looking at sinker slider pitcher, and you should be getting a lot of ground balls. That's some interesting pitching notes on Tyson Ross. We say that because we remember when he was with the A's, a lot of fastballs, yeah. good hard right. sinker, but what he's become is much more of a, a slider pitcher. He's got a very good one. And it acts like a split finger fastball, and we mentioned the Sonny Gray comparison because Gray's slider goes down hard. And goes down hard like a splitter. So check this out, Ray. He throws his slider 46% of the time, most in the majors. That is unbelievable. But it works. How's your elbow doing, Tyson? Yeah, well, that's true. In fact, last year, he threw 1,272 sliders. And that was. Did you count all those? I counted every single one. I went back, <laughs> looked at all the tape. But that's that's a lot of sliders. A lot of sliders. Another one. This year he's thrown 602, and that's the highest total in the major league. So obviously the percentage is the highest. Yeah. And the total amount of sliders is the highest. So it's interesting, but it's a good pitch for him if he can get it around the strike zone. I think that pitch, and then if he can be near the strike zone with. That fastball that moves so much, yeah. then he's tough to hit. Zobers takes a strike on the outside corner, so three and one. So keep an eye on that as you watch Tyson Ross tonight. The slider. That was an easy 94 mile hour fastball that he just threw on three and zero, oh, and you'd have to think with the movement and that easy velocity, and with his frame and how he keeps the ball down, you could understand the ground ball outs, but also wonder sometimes why he doesn't use the fastball more. And that one, it just off the plate. So a couple of walks here in the first inning. So
So his 39th walk, that's the most in the majors. And he comes in right eighth in the National League in total strikeouts. So oh, wow. he's an interesting pitcher statistically. He can be tough to hit, but yet at times gets himself in trouble. A little bit like that with the A's as well. And so you could think that the infielders and outfielders don't have a lot of work. Strikeouts and walks, you're not catching a lot of balls. And that's Derek Norris telling his infielders what he might do in the event both runners take off. As I mentioned, Derek Norris, the everyday catcher for the Padres. And coincidentally, you have two catchers, one former and one hitting right now, leading their respective teams and runs about it in. First pitch to vote. There is that slider and drops in for strike 87 miles an hour. Okay, that's a good point. That's a get me over slider. Almost like he's, he's going to throw it as a change of speeds, but he's throwing it as some guys would do for a pitch and whether it's just going to try to throw a strike, whether it's a first pitch or in a 3 and 0. One to vote, and he hits one high in the air to left shallow. Justin Upton in. He's got it. Side retired. So a couple of runners stranded for the A's, and the Padres come to bat in the bottom of the first. Check out the Padres lineup. Will Venable leads off. Corey Spangenberg hits second. Justin Upton third. Upton having a very nice season. Matt Kemp at right. Yonder Alonso is the first baseman. Derek Norris will catch and hit sixth. And Hervis Salarte the third baseman. Alexi Amarista at short. And then Tyson Ross. And for Jesse Hahn, his shortest outing last start as a member of the Athletics, just three and two thirds innings. Hit three batters in one game. And of course, in the game, gave up a three run spot. And trailed by a score of four to two, but the A's had their first walk off of the season. That was in Jesse Hahn's last start, so he's facing his former team tonight, looking for win number four. 16 walks in 70 and a third innings. Good sinker ball pitcher. And you see a lot of ground balls tonight if both pitchers are on the game. First pitch to Will Venable is in first strike. Venable hitting 268 with five home runs, playing center field. Curve and a good one, 0 and 2. Fastball right there, strike three call. Venable Moore spins around, heads back to the dugout. So on three pitches, Han strikes out Venable for the first out. Well, the movement slight, but uh, right towards the middle of the plate for Jesse Han against the lefty and. That's a good start for Jesse facing his team. And you'd have to think a few I guess, anxious moments for him as uh, he was traded for Derek Norris. And of course, Norris having an outstanding season for the Padres. Jesse, though, in the rotation for the Athletics, doing a very good job. This is Corey Spangenberg, who follows the first one up. Well, Jesse Hahn did a nice job for the Padres last year. I'm sure the Padres weren't crazy about yeah. trading a young pitcher who is ready to pitch in the exactly. big leagues, but 
They also got an all-star catcher in Derek Norris back. So I think the A's are happy with Han. And the Padres are happy with Norris. Seven wins last year in his first season for the Padres and in the rotation in 14 games. And you know too, Ray, if, if Steven Vogt doesn't emerge as a, a, an everyday catcher and, and, and a good all-around catcher, maybe the A's don't trade Derek yeah. Norris. But you know, Vogt proved that pretty good, pretty good player. Well, you think of uh, the Padres had Grandal. They traded yeah. him to the Dodgers to the in the Kemp trade, so they were looking for a catcher. And he's uh, traded Derek Norris, and his numbers throwing out. Base runners. I was talking to one scout. Had him at a 1-8 throw from uh, behind the plate. Jesse Hahn, R.J. Alvarez, and a trade. High fastball and a good pitch. Spangenberg strikes out. So back-to-back -back strikeouts for Hahn to open up the ball game for him. Well, if you can elevate like this, maybe unintentionally, but it worked out well. That's perfect pitch. And once again, Stephen Bolt moving inside. And the pitch was in there, but also elevated. So here's Justin Upton. Upton having a very nice season. 13 home runs, 41 RBIs, and a 286 batting average. Swings at the first pitch, fouls it into the upper deck. The brothers are together again, huh? Yeah. The Uptons. Melvin. Yeah, he's not BJ anymore. No, he's, no. he's not Boss Man Jr. It's just Melvin. Big contract with the Atlanta Braves for Melvin Upton. Well, it didn't pan out for him for sure. But Tampa Bay Rays, he was outstanding. He was an infielder, a center fielder. Signed a huge contract for five years with the Braves. And you get Craig Kimball. Hey, you got to have Mr. Upton yep. as well. Got to take him. And his salary, and they did. Justin Upton came over in a trade from the Atlanta Braves. That was in December. Man, it was a busy offseason for oh. the Padres. They just kept wheeling and dealing. 2 1 pitch is hit high in the air to center. Room for Burns, though, as he circles around it. Under it, he's got it. Side retired. So a three up, three down inning for Jesse Hodward. Headed to the second, no score. By Prism, now your team can collaborate at a whole new level with video walls from Prism. Learn how at Prism.com. No score. The A's and the Padres interleague baseball from San Diego. Birdie's been busy, huh? Birdie was out all day. Mike oh. Bird, our director, he was out all day. 
getting some great shots. He's an amazing man. Thought I saw him actually. I got a speedboat, you know, getting some shots. Yeah. Driving and shooting. Selfie? At the same time. Doing, doing a whole selfie, huh? That's pretty impressive. Very talented man. Mike Bird. Probably see him got on those bicycles you see in the racks on the street. Sure. So now you can pay a few bucks, get a bike, take a ride, put it back. What if the tire goes flat? What do you do then? Just put it back with a flat tire or you have to repair it? I really thought about that. That's <laughs> just thinking about that. I've seen outside the hotel here, so yeah. I'm in uh, Kansas City. I guess it's a new business where you put the racks out on the street. Put a bike there. You can rent it for whatever time. Ernie probably's done that too. Maybe you and I should do it. Just go for a little bike ride. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. We could ride our bikes to the ballpark here. <laughs> it's about 50 feet over the ramp. <laughs> yeah, this is about as convenient as there has ever been a hotel yeah, tough and, to beat, and, isn't and, it? and a park. Mickey Morbido has done He's a great job. Too bad all four games aren't here. If you think about the access to the stadium. Spangenberg makes the play, but he's thrown up nearly in time. So Laurie has an infield hit. Let's check about Tyson Ross as an athletic. Had some terrific outings with the A's. It is number 66. And I thought I was asking one time, what is 66? Well, I'm 66 and grew up on 66. So, but he had that great game at Anaheim, and you can see the hard sinker, the slider working. He just could not quite put no. it all together with the Athletics. There was games where he was dominant. I think the one game in Anaheim, it might have been the one that, uh, let's say, Justin Dukes was supposed to start. It was crashed last minute, and it said, Tyson, grab a ball. You're a starting pitcher tonight. And first start, I think you're right. Okay. Tyson Ross was acquired on November 16th of 2012 by the Padres from the A's in exchange for Andrew Warner, a left handed pitcher, and Andy Perino. Yeah. Perino, shortstop for the Athletics. Defensive specialist, the magician. Just a bit high, one and one to count. And Ross kind of put it all together last year. That was the deal back in 2012. And hey, when Johnny Dosco gives you a nickname, it sticks, doesn't it? I mean, the magician, Andy yeah. Perino. Yeah. One and one to Max Muncie. And that one a strike. One and two now, Muncie. Muncie hitting 212, couple home runs, six RBIs. Well, Max Muncie at first base, and we always talk about if you have a designated hitter. Of course, Billy Butler capable of playing first, but Bob Millman opted to put the left handed hitter in tonight, and he had a great at bat yesterday, as we noted in Anaheim. That ball he hit to left center off Shoemaker. Turned out to be a huge hit for the A's, and a nice interview post game for yep. us on uh, Comcast Sportsnet California. Yesterday, check out this one in left center. This was a two to one game, and Angels trying to get through this inning, but this started what turned out to be three runs, all scoring with two outs. And Max Muncy with a double to left center, Sogard with single, so with full, and so with Burns, all coming off the left hander Alvarez. And that one past the first baseman Alonzo, and Laurie will go to second base. Throw so a sinker. <laughs> it was a sinker. <laughs> At least Alonzo went after it like it was a sinker. We'll see who the air is going to be on. He went on the throw of ball. Anytime a first baseman has to reach to his right, that means he's into the runner. And Alonzo probably could have left his position instead of reaching and stretching. That's the time when you go after the ball instead of trying to reach for the ball. And the result was the A's have a runner in scoring position, a chance. With nobody out, see if Muncy can do something good in this at bat. Simeon to follow. And a hard slider, and he gets the strikeout. So he went to his out pitch, and that was a good one. Well, down and in, especially if you can pull it, if you can make contact, pretty good chance you are going to pull it to the right side, but and Muncie with uh, the pitch down and in. It looks so good, but then a hard slider, especially with the movement from Tyson Ross, it breaks nicely. 
So here's Simeon. And the first pitch on the outside corner for a strike. Simeon 267 with six home runs, 16 RBI. Both Bay Area products. That's right. Simeon and Ross. And Smart Cannon going to school and in the South Bay, not playing tonight. That one bounced just foul. All right, well, let's check. I'm just checking on. We know Ross was, let's see, he was drafted. Checking which draft he was in. It was 2008. Check Simeon's draft. 2008. No. 2011. Yeah. He was actually drafted twice by the White Sox. So Ross a little bit older than Simeon. That's how it almost looked like uh, Simeon was looking for the slider. It was away. It was a down pitch and a pretty good pitch. So 0 1 2 with Jesse on the pitcher waiting in the on deck circle. Spangenberg cheating over a little bit to try to keep Laurie close, and he heads back to his position. Count 1 and 2 now. Well, we might as well say it and get it out of the way. Interleague play in National League Park with a pitcher hitting, eighth place hitter. You have to know the situation. First base is open. Do they decide they're going to pitch to you or not? Two strikes very quickly ahead in the count with Ross. And that one is a strike three call because it was a fastball. Kind of like a high sinker, yeah. but it caught the strike zone. So back to back strikeouts for Tyson Ross. It was up in the zone a little bit, had a little movement coming back from outside to the plate. Derek Norris holding it for Mike DeMuro. So here's Han. First pitch is inside. Han has two hits in his major league career. Two for 22. With a couple of sack bunts. And remember when A's hitters are pitching and hitting in National League Parks, they do not and are not allowed to swing the bat. Except for maybe three or four days before the actual game. Unlike the Padres pitchers who were out here hitting early today before the first group. The last hit was 2013 by an A's pitcher, so they were 0 for 21 last year and 0 for their last 34. Tommy Malone could hit this. Yes, he could. Yeah, good swing. What he had a home run in his first at bat That's is right. it with the Nationals, yeah. yeah. But we were not surprised when he got that hit. So one and two the count. And a foul tip. And that's a strikeout. And it ends up being three strikeouts for Tyson Ross. So Laurie is stranded at second. Bottom of the second coming up.
Padres. This is why there was so much optimism surrounding the Padres coming into the season. Kemp, Upton, Norris, Shields, Kimbrell, all those players were acquired. And forget about Will Myers, a former That's rookie right. of the year. I mean, it was it was quite a haul by the Padres. So you could see why there was so much optimism. And now you can see why there's a fair amount of disappointment because at yeah. this point in the season, the Padres are 32 and 33, and they're trailing the Dodgers by six. And they're in third place, so they're chasing the Giants and the Dodgers. And of course, they knew coming into the season it was going to be the Dodgers, the favorite to win the Western Division, but they still made a lot of moves, including getting this man from the Dodgers, as they had a, a lot of extra outfielders. One robbed him yesterday on the ball straight away center field. Kept toward right center and Burns comes in. He's got it. So that's out number one. Well, last year the Padres won 77 and 85. And that was their fourth consecutive losing year. Remember 2010, they won 90 games and they took the Giants right down to the end. Right. And got knocked out in the final game of the season. But since then, four straight losing seasons, and I think the Padres said, you know, we gotta do something here. Yeah. And they did. But it was uh, there's also also a fair amount of risk involved from a financial standpoint. They upped their payroll this year to 108 million. Up from 90 million last year. So it's very interesting what they did, and right now it has not worked out, but there's still quite a bit of time left in this season. They're not buried 10, 11, 12 games out, they're only six out. One of the things that the fans have to deal with is that Bud Black not only, I mean, he's a great person. Hey, gentlemen, and I think sometimes you can't have a calming effect on a team by the way you do advantage, the way you handle yourself. But bottom line, too, players have to perform. If they don't perform, no matter how you are, and if the expectations are there, yeah. that's the tough part for a manager. And really, the I mean, the, the guys that we showed you, the new players. Shields has been good. Kimbrell's very good closer. Derek Norris having a very nice season. Upton's having a good season. Kemp, not so much. Will Myers is, in fact, the Padres just put Will Myers on to disable us again. Yeah, yeah. Remember he had a bad wrist? Yeah. Came back, played three games, back on the disabled list. That happened today as well. So Will Myers has not played a whole lot this year for the Padres. So that's a loss. And the trade actually, Will Myers to Tampa for James Shields, and they end up both in the same club That's right. in San Diego. That's so right. There's Will Myers. Myers. James Shields pitched yesterday, so the A's will not see him in the four game series. Now yeah, they'll see him, but he won't be pitching. They saw him last September, what, 28th, and they play in game. Shields uh, signed late, but got a nice contract, 7 0 on the season. Yesterday, Took him out for a pinch out. He's a pretty good hitting pitcher. 3 0 pitch to Norris is on the outside corner first strike. Saw the numbers for Norris seven homers, 39 RBIs, facing the guy he was traded for. Three one pitch, good swing, fouled straight back. Of course, Norris was an all-star last year with the Athletics. You notice too, Kai, probably he's, he said he lost about 15 pounds. It's a lot in the on-deck circle, but Derek Norris, it's, he said his goal was to get a chance to play every day, and he thought that would not happen until free agency. The, the, the trade put him in the Padres uniform, and that's what he is doing for them. Now, Norris last year hit 270 with 10 home runs, 55 RBIs in it. 127 games. So Han kicks in the 3 2 pitch. Hit down the right field line. It's a long run for Reddick, and it'll drop five. 
But it was kind of fun to see Derek Norris saying hi to mm. former teammates yeah. before the game. He also said, hey, you know what? There's a lot of guys there that I don't know yeah. because of all the changes right. the A's made in the offseason. Also, the Padres hitting coach, Mark Kotze, who finally yeah. got to postseason with Jason Kendall's good friend in 06. There is Mark, who said his name was thrown about uh, in the Marlins as a replacement possibly for Mike Redmond, but he had some ties to the Marlins, but he is from this area. He probably will manage one day. Well, his name's been thrown around for yeah. here. Yeah. Now that Bud Black is been let go and Norris takes a close pitch a two out walk. That's the first base runner for the Padres. Sometimes you wonder why hitters don't swing at certain pitches and that was one there. Jesse Hahn looking in did not get the call and really a good pitcher's pitch and, and sometimes a hitter will say that's too close to take don't want to depend on the umpire to make the call. But Jesse Hahn with the two seamer had to be called low I would assume. Mike Muir has had the high strike call tonight a couple of times. So here's Jan Hervis Salarte playing third base, pitches down and in. We saw Salarte with the Yankees last year, but he was traded in the Chase Headley deal. Yeah. Chase Headley went from the Padres to the Yankees, and that was 22nd of July, so not at the trade deadline, but close to it. Salarte is becoming a, an important player for the Padres. He can play numerous positions. A couple of home runs and 26 RBIs. He's a switch hitter playing third base tonight. And he lines that one into the glove of Marcus Simeon. He was positioned well. The side is retired. A runner left, and we're scoreless after two. His eighth win and his third against the Angels this year. He now has the best ERA in the major leagues at 1.60. How about that? Yesterday, seven and two thirds innings. One run, but it was unearned. Nine strikeouts right at 100 pitches. So Sonny Gray just keeps rolling along. Don't make plans for the All Star break. Sonny Gray. Yeah, I just plan to fly to Cincinnati or drive to Cincinnati from Cleveland where the A's will be. At the end of the first half. Straight south. Yeah. Top of the order for the Athletics. No score. Top of the third. Burns, Sogard, and Reddick. Burns takes a strike in the inside corner. Burns hit the first pitch of the game about 
a foot and a half past home plate, and Norris picked it up and threw him out. Swing and a miss. There's that slider, and it is a sharp breaker. You know when he throws it down and into the left-handers, it's it's really almost. Well, right there you see it, and you see it as a strike, and then when you start your swing, why am I doing this? Because it's not even close to being a strike. And there it is again, and it's another strikeout. That's four consecutive strikeouts for Tyson Ross. All right, here's our Geico quote of the game. Getting back to Sonny Gray, this is what Stephen Boat said. Quote. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Hands down, he's an ace. I don't think there's any question about that. I wonder how long it took him to come up with that quote. Yeah, well. Now he's worried about Jesse Hahn right now. You know, Jesse Hahn, when he pitched that shutout on Memorial Day, he was the best pitcher hands down. Sure. He's an ace. See, that's what catchers build up their pitchers, that every one of the pitchers <laughs> is an ace. Tonight you're the ace. One oh pitch to Sogard down around the knees first strike Sogard walked in the first two walks four strikeouts for Tyson Ross so far. And there's a line drive right field and that's a hit camp over to cut it off. So hit number two for the A's. That's Darren Bush the A's hitting coach about Eric Sogard and his approach and. He basically said it's all about his positioning at the plate. I thought it was an interesting term that he used. I said, what do you mean? He said that means that he doesn't open up. He doesn't close up. He's just very straight forward in his positioning so he can handle anything, whether it's inside, outside. And, of course, Darren Bush working with all the hitters. A lot of scatter reports on these pitchers, and he knew exactly that Tyson Ross is going to be throwing a lot of sliders in tonight's game, and he's already been doing that. Ross almost threw another one away. Sogard might have been running. And uh, the A's feel that they can run on Tyson Ross. He has a long leg kick. I think that's a pretty good indication there that he might have been thinking about going. Not running this time, and Reddick takes a strike. Well, that movement on that fastball from Tyson Ross. It's almost like Mike DeMiro, the home plate umpire, has to wait. If there's ever time to have a delayed delay call, that might be in tonight's game, especially with Ross and the movement on both the slider and his fastball. I think Barry Zito was always one to kind of penalize because of the great curveball that he threw it threw up in the zone, and umpires sometimes would call it based where they saw it there yeah. and wouldn't allow for the break when it ended up in the strike zone. Probably a nightmare pitch oh, for an umpire. Exactly. Second only to the knuckleball. <laughs> so guard runs, pitches low, and Norris cannot quite get a handle on it, so no throw and a stolen base for Sogard. That's called picking the right pitch exactly. to go on. Exactly right. And really, if you know the hitters a pitcher's gonna throw a lot of sliders, you have to wonder when isn't the right time to run, but Sogard got a great jump, slider in the dirt. Norris picked it cleanly, but no transfer. So he's picked up a stolen base to get a runner in scoring position. Freddie can drive him home. He rips one into the right field corner, but just foul. A hanging high slider. There's your hanger, and there's the swing, and Josh Reddick, no way that he can keep it fair. Right field corner, a little deceiving because it looks like the line is more towards the wall, side rail, indicating not much foul, uh, foul territory, but there is a lot down left field, right field line. What's a bit strange, I guess, is there's more foul territory down the right field line than there's down the left field. Just line. noticing that yeah, you're right. Which is yeah. probably twice as much. No, it's not a huge deal, but you just don't see that very often. Yeah. 
Maybe it's because of that old building in that field. <laughs> That's right, the Western <laughs> Metal Supply <laughs> Company. Don't mess with that baby. Yeah. Norris blocks it, picks it up, so the count two and two. Quick look at Petco Park and the dimensions. A big ballpark, but not as big as it used to be. Yeah. They've shortened it. In fact, they just shortened it coming into this season. But you see, it opened back in 2004, so 12th year of Petco Park. But we'll, we'll tell you about where they shortened it and why. 2-2 two, two to Reddick, and he hits it hard in the left field. That's a base hit. Here comes up, then he picks it up. They're waving Sogard home. The throw to the plate is late, and Sogard scores, and the A's take a 1-0 lead. Once again, Josh Reddick, outstanding opposite field hitting. In fact, one of the problems that an outfielder has here, he has to play deep, which means... It's not like Boston where Fenway Park you, you forget about running but Upton is playing deep great job of hitting by Josh Reddick with a sinker away open hole on the left side and Upton a very strong arm Derek Norris in that precarious position at the plate does he go for it and worry about being called for interference Sogard a great job going around him right there. He had the on deck hitter Zobras telling him to slide to the outside he went around Derek Norris hit his hand on the bag and that was a great job of hitting by Josh Reddick, especially with two strikes. So Reddick gets his 40th RBI. And he's with a 1 0 lead here in the third as Zobrist hits. And the stolen base by Sogard, picking the right pitch to run on, pays off. It's interesting, Ray. You see where. And Norris was really. Well, I guess he gave him a little bit of a, a little lane, outside. He gave it to him, then he caught the ball and took it away. Sure. Really, after it's by him, but I, I really think it's it's so hard on catchers not knowing how they're going to position themselves, because they can make a great play, and then all of a sudden they do the challenge and find out maybe his foot just wasn't in the right spot, didn't have the ball in his glove, and he blocked the play. Well, they've tried to. Clarify it some, but I think it's still a huge gray area. I, I think there's too many that still don't know the rules. 3 0 pitch to Zobris, the high strike call, 3 and 1. And you know what? Keep an eye on Reddick. I wouldn't be surprised yeah. if he takes off. Reddick's been a pretty good base dealer. He's 3 for 4 this year. So the count 3 and 1 to Zobris with Vote waiting in the on deck circle. Reddick is leaning, not going, and a slider for a strike. Zobrist tried to check his swing. I think he did, but the pitch was called a strike. That's another one of those get me over sliders. A lot of three and two counts for Tyson Ross tonight, and as a result, the pitch got 53 in the third inning. Timeout called very late. In fact, so late that Reddick was a third of the way to second base. He was going, so the, st the stolen base strategy has been given yeah. away. <laughs> that's that's really too late. I mean, yeah. Ross was lifting his leg. Yeah, exactly. That, that's scary because I always worry about a pitcher getting hurt. Makes you wonder now, does Derek Norris call another slider? Well, who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I don't think Reddick running is going to take away from the pitch calling. With Ross slider being his better pitch. Reddick does run, and the pitch is low, and it's another walk. So walk number three by Ross. Need a hit from big hit from vote. A run in on Reddick's RBI single. Stephen Vogt just 
Wrapping almost every part of his body now. He's got protection on his right elbow. He's got a sleeve on his left elbow. And we know what he has in the right foot, the steel plate. Well, right now the A's got Ross on the ropes a little bit. He looks a little out of whack. Yeah. He's already thrown 55 pitches. And that one drops in first strike. Probably a good pitch for Vote to take. His loss took quite a bit off a of breaking ball. I was thinking about Tyson Ross growing up in the Bay Area, pitching for the A's, which sometimes is rare that you're drafted by a team, you sign with a team that you grew up watching. And so knowing this game televised back to Bay Area, family, friends watching. And there's a line drive left center field, and that's a base hit. Reddick's going to score. Zobras trying for third. He will make it and vote with a big hit. So the A's lead two to nothing. And I think Stephen Vogt needed that, yeah. Ray. He's been really yeah. scuffling. Well, more and more we're seeing Stephen Vogt stay back. He stays back perfectly, just like Josh Reddick did on a pitch that was up and away. And watch how he takes the pitch that's kind of running away from him. Almost identical pitch that Reddick got. This one a little bit higher. But you don't want to try to pull it. A lot of hits that direction. And so the aggressiveness of Mike Gallego, the base runner, is going. Stephen Volk with a run batted in, his 41st. I think also the throw in by Upton. Look at the number of hits. Left field, 11 by Stephen Volk. So 27 that he's pulled, but those 11 to the opposite field are huge. But when Volk rounded first, he was thinking about going to second. With the throw coming in, but Upton hit the cutoff yep. man, and that's always important because it does keep the the double play in order. He made the strong throw, no chance to throw out. Ready for the scoring, but Stephen Vogt going opposite field. Great hit, aggressively going around the bag, thinking about going, and then he sees the cutoff man is hit, and if it had continued, he'd have been out by 20 feet, if not more. So good job of hustling around the bag, but stopping when he saw the cutoff man was hit. Here's Laurie slowly hit Ross picks it up and he's going to have to hold on to it. Zobris comes in to score and the A's lead three nothing. So Laurie will have an infield hit and Zobris going to third on that single helps the A's get a run. That's exactly right. That's a great point because these little things. If he's at second it's a bases loaded situation still a chance to get out but he just topped it and. Actually, Tyson Ross probably heard his third baseman said, don't throw, don't throw, and he didn't because he had no chance to do anything except maybe throw the ball there at first base. So there goes the sprinter through the bag down the right field line, and he'll take it. So 26th RBI for Lori in his 10th infield hit. And here's Muncy who swings over top a slider. So five consecutive A's have reached base. It's gone single, single, walk, single, single, and the A's have scored three. Once he lays off that time, once he struck out in the second inning. Jesse Hahn gave up three to the Rangers in his last start in the third inning. This inning, he says his club score at least three with a chance to get some more. And he's anxiously waiting to get another at bat. Missed again, two and one. So 25 pitches in this inning and 61 in the game for Tyson Ross. So vote at second, Laurie at first. Muncy fouls it off his foot. So the count even at two and two. Now the way this is going for Tyson Ross, he might not get a chance to swing the bat. He's a due up second in the third inning as Muncy takes another slider down and in off his foot. Dave Roberts might get to try a double switch early in this game. 
Biggest stolen base in Boston Red Sox history. That man right there in the 2004 League Championship Series. I dropped his name when we were in Boston, but couldn't get a free meal. He can. He can. <laughs> <laughs> he and Luis Gonzalez can eat and drink as much as they want. Good take by Muncie. Now the count is full three and two. Good name to drop. I tried. Yeah. Would Bob Melvin send the runners on 3 2 with one out? I don't think so. He is not. Once he fouls it straight back. Uh, probably a couple things, if nothing else, he'd like to get Jesse Hahn up in this inning if he does come up. He, you don't want a pitcher leading off. Muncie has a chance to drive the ball, keep the inning going, and leave it up to Marcus Simeon and, and really put a little pressure on Tyson Ross not to open up a base where they could pitch carefully to Simeon to get to Han, who is ready to go. This one hit high in the air. Upton and left is under it, and he's got it for the second out. So you have pointed out in the past there is a base open with the pitcher in the on deck circle and I guess in National League Baseball sometimes you think a little bit more about an open base being at third than you would in the American League just because the pitcher is in the on deck circle and why take a chance with a proven hitter hitting in front of the pitcher. I mean and, and I know a lot of American League people don't like the National League style and it's understandable. But there are a lot of small things that come into play. And this is one of them. How do you pitch the eighth place hitter with a bag open? Do you pitch him carefully and then load the bases? And just then throw. you got to throw a strike. Tyson strike. Ross has walked three. Right. And and he just threw a very good slider first pitch. And this is where Marcus Simeon perhaps has been told by Bob Melvin, Darren Bush, several of the coaches, manager, and Another slider, yeah. Sibian lines to Amarista, side retired. Good inning for the A's. They score three times. Bottom of the third coming up. Athletics three, Padres nothing. For a stack of bacon. Fans will love the Billy Butler Country Breakfast Bowl. 15,000 fans will pick up the ball courtesy of Xfinity on Sunday, June the 28th, when the A's play host to the Kansas City Royals. Get your tickets today by calling 877 493 ball or logging on to athletics.com slash tickets. That is a nice view. See, you can ride a bike. Go rent a bike, ride it, ride it down next to the water. You and I. Be great. <laughs> yeah. Probably have to stop and eat someplace. Yes, we would. <laughs> We'd stop and have a snack and then stop and eat later. <laughs>
Here's Alexi Amarista facing Jesse Hop. Only one base runner in the first two innings for the Padres. That was Norris two out walk last night. Shutdown inning opportunity for Jesse Hop. Quick 3 0 to Alexi Amarista. Tyson Ross is in the on deck circle and getting out of the inning with allowing three and leaving two on keeps him in the game. Pitch on the inside corner with a fastball. Amarista Ross and Venable, 8 9 and 1 for the pods. Jesse Hogg was the on deck circle with a helmet ready to hit, so he had to change gears quickly and get back out on the mound. Throw strikes, which he's done the last two. So 3 and 2 to Amarista. It's inside, not by much, so a leadoff walk. Well, Ray, we talked about the fences and the dimensions of this ballpark, but a couple years ago, prior to the 2013 season, the right field fences and the left field fences were moved in. Now, that's the right field, and that was moved in 11 feet. It's a bunch. In fact, the old wall, see where it said Jack Daniels? That's that where the old wall was. Now, in left field, it was moved in 12 feet in deep left center field. That's right down the line. Mm -hmm. But that's deep left center field and that's where it came in 12 feet. So it's still a very big ballpark. But it used to be even bigger. Yeah. Now think about that 11 feet in right field and in deep left center 12 feet. That's a long we way. We remember 2009 yeah. and uh, how much deeper it was and. Do you think yesterday Upton came close to hitting a walk-off, or at least a game winner, off the wall? Ross shows butt, and the count is one and zero. So they have tried to make it a little more hitter-friendly, which I'm sure it is, but it's still a pitcher's ballpark. Here's the national pitchers. Pitchers are doing what Ross is doing right now. Just square around telling the world it's going to be bunny. He bunts it up in the air. But that Western Metal Supply Company building over a hundred years old and they really they built the stadium. They said you know what let's leave that right there. And we'll sort of make that at one of the signature things in this. Is that, you see the left field foul line. I mean, it's actually yeah. attached to the corner yeah. of the building. Now, is that a fire up on the rooftop? Are they barbecuing or doing something? Oh, like yeah. That? That's a party suite yeah. up there. See big flames coming out. I hope that's I hope they're barbecuing. <laughs> that's a good button right there. Hahn picks it up. Throws to first to get Ross. So sacrifice is complete. Nicely done by Tyson Ross. Uh, that's exactly what a pitcher in the National League is supposed to do. An American League pitcher. Pitching in a National League park. Be able to get the bunt down, and Tyson Ross does a nice job. And really, while well, pitchers get a chance when they're taking batting practice to hit and try to hit the ball as far as they can, they do swing the bat every day, unlike American League pitchers for Jesse Hahn and Scott Casimir. Maybe the last three or four days hitting in the cage, and that's it. So, one out for Will Venable. Well, Bob Melvin was asked about that before the game today, and he was said, hey, "Hey, the question from a reporter was, is is there a little bit of an advantage for the National League team when an American League team plays in a National League park?" He said, "Yeah." He said, "Listen, he said there's a little bit of an advantage, but he did not mention the fact that, hey, the American League team is taking out a hitter, right? Where the National League team is, that's it's normal. But no. that's not what he said. He said." That it's the fact that their pitchers are used to this and they right. hit all year round. Right. Our pitchers, they're not used to it at all. Exactly. And he said that's in yeah. his mind is the big difference. And it makes perfect sense, like you said earlier. I mean, the A's hitters, they, they've been hitting for how long? A week and a half, two weeks. If that, yeah, I, I, and I, I think when uh, Scott Casimir. At the Coliseum, the last homestand, which was only three days, he started then. So about a week, sure, basically, and mostly just a bunt. And you know, bunting is fine, but just think if they get on the bases and have to run, 
something that they normally never even think about. Again, this, yeah. I mean, this is all those little things that yeah. we're talking about. And and Bob Melvin said, he goes, the difference is for a manager strategically, he says, is you always are thinking about the pitcher spot That's in right. the batting order. That's right. And when it's coming up, how far is it away? Right. You're thinking about that when your team's batting and when the other team's batting. And I thought it was interesting because you're thinking, ah, it's the pitcher. <laughs> He's not going to get hit. But there's so much that surrounds that ninth spot, right. even though it's a spot where it's a guy who's not a good hitter. Exactly. He did say, too, he goes, you know what, listen, I manage in the National League. He said, I enjoy it. There's a lot of different yeah. things going on. He was with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Well, Bob Melvin does know that in the National League, if you're double switching, you go to the umpire first. Yes. Make sure. And make sure you, <laughs> you get the double switch right. <laughs> exactly. Had an instant in Cubs when the A's actually went to Wrigley Field. There was something that happened there that uh, never not, forget. Just say, what's going on? Everybody, what is he doing? Well, if you don't do that, then you get in trouble. And that one shoots past Venable to the backstop. Did it hit him? No, maybe not. I don't know. <laughs> Venable said, wait. He took off toward first, but I don't know that it hit him. It may I, have went behind him. Well, typically if that happens, the hitter will go forward. And the amazing thing is the runner second didn't advance. Watch, see if the hitter goes forward. Yeah, it did hit Just him. hit his uniform, yeah. raised it. Yeah. Yeah, it did. It you could see it got his uniform. It it uh, and the, the uniform actually when he was moving it bloused a little bit. And that's a tough call for an umpire. Sure it is. Because the, the ball is behind the hitter. Right. right. So this is going to be a runner at first and second for the Padres. Now watch the pant leg. See, he moves forwards, and that blouses the uniform right there. I mean, he's acting like it hit him flush. It, it got the uniform. Uniform, whether you see as a, a hitter has the, the jersey that blouses a little bit. And you know one part, too. Remember when Manny Ramirez had the dreadlocks? They were considered part of his body. Sure. And... If he had leaned over and the ball hits the hair, it's considered a hit pattern. So if you're Will Venable right now, just go to first base. Still has the bat in his hand. Sell it. It is taking too long. I'm surprised at how long it's taken. Well, we can simply say that Jesse Hunt overthrew the pitch. <laughs> That's right. I think he wanted a two seamer inside and it uh, kept running. I would have thought this would take about 30 seconds. They just showed it in real time on their jumbotron and actually watching it in real time looked like it didn't hit him. That's but a new Jumbotron. Yes, it, it is. Yeah, brand new this year, right? They said it's the biggest in the National League, third biggest in baseball. It's bigger than Turner Field? Atlanta uh, has. You know what? With Kansas City is bigger and Seattle is bigger. Yeah. But this is the biggest in the National League. It's beautiful. High above the yeah. seats out there in left field. All in HD, just like at the Coliseum, the new board's there. Wow. They said it did not hit him. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Wow. That's unbelievable. Well, Venable. That's good for the A's. Yeah, Venable couldn't feel it. And maybe that's why he said it's a plate kite because, well, watch the uniform. And how can they not I, I see know. that? I, I know. I, that is hard to believe. But I mean, are we missing something here on that replay? Uh, evidently. <laughs> We have done oh something. Goodness. Okay. 
Okay. So it's three and two. It was not a hit batter. And that one's belted to center. Burns on the move. Still on the move. It's over his head up against the wall. Amarista's going to score, and Venable has an RBI double. So Venable straight away center field, and the Padres are on the board. And I guess from his standpoint, he'll take the extra pitch on three and two. And uh, Venable actually did a very good job because if you're a hitter and you have that length of time to review a play, and I don't know that Jesse Hahn threw many, if any, warm up tosses. I know his catcher went out and, and maybe just didn't feel like he needed them, but that fastball three and two was saying right here, hit me. And he crushed it to center, and you see the center fielder throw up the glove, indicating there's no chance he's going to catch it. And how about the walk to the eighth place hitter? There you go. So here's Spangenberg. Spangenberg struck out in the first inning. But that's all part of that pitcher spot, too, Ray. If you yep. get the eighth place hitter for the first out, well, then generally. Nine out of ten times, you're probably going to get the pitcher out. Oh, yeah, two outs, nobody out. Exactly. And for Tyson Ross, by getting Marcus Simeon, he has Jesse Hahn leading off the top of the That's fourth right. inning. One and zero to Spangenberg. Spangenberg toward Muncie, who scoops it up. He'll take it himself. That's the second out here in the third inning. Well, it's a great point about the hitter in front of the pitcher. You. Get him out, and not many pitchers are that good of hitters. And there are some, but if you look at their averages, they're going to see like the A's with now 0 for 35 since their last hit in interleague play. So here is Upton. Upton hit a fly ball to center field in the first. Looking at Justin Upton's age, Ray. He's 27 years old. And he's going to be a free agent. He's going to be a very rich young man. <laughs> he's in the final year of a six year, $51 million contract. He signed early on in his career with the Diamondbacks. So this is a perfect example of a guy signing a nice contract early. But still early enough where he's going to get another big contract and it's going to be bigger than that. This one is skied shallow right. Sogard under it. He's got it side retired. So a run for the Padres. We're headed to the fourth. A's three. Padres one.
It was 2009. Check out some of these names. <laughs> Game one, Orlando Cabrera, a double in the eighth inning. It scored Matt Holiday and Jason Giambi. You knew the double was off of? Edward Mahika. Oh. And then in game two, Kurt <laughs> Suzuki singles to right. It would score, a.k.a. Adam Kennedy. And the A's won the game 6-3. to three. How about that? <laughs> Edward Mahika, who is now with the A's. Unbelievable. So that was 2009. A's took two out of three the last time they were here. <laughs> That's great. <laughs> 2009. A.K.A. Adam. That's right. Hot swings and misses. So it was a big series for our man Adam Kennedy. Michael works with a couple of Andrew, Andrew Bailey. Woo! Overall, the A's are 16 and 9 against the Padres. That was the last time they were here. The last time. These two teams played was actually in Oakland in 2012 as Han strikes out. So that's strikeout number five for Tyson Ross. Hey with them, Jesse, just keep pitching. Now correct me if I'm wrong, Ray. I was not with the A's at this time, but Tim Hudson made his major yes, debut he oh. here in San Diego, right? Yes, it is. Not at this ballpark. Ball and he he not only was tremendous pitching, but he was hitting. That's right. Of course he played center field for Auburn. And not surprised that he loved to put a bat in his hand. Sounds like this would be the final year for Tim Hudson. He got his ring though. That's all he was hoping for. And he was able to do that last year. Burns slices one foul. Yeah, Timmy hit a a ball to right center. He rounded first base like he was going to go for two, and he could still they see that little smile on his face when he got back. And went, ooh, I don't think I'm better, but he could swing the bat. Of course, pitching was tremendous throughout his time with the A's. And it's continued. Braves, and now with the Giants. One and two to Burns. Ground out and a strikeout. And taps this one toward third. Solarde charges, throws in time. Two out. Well, the A's last year in interleague play went 13 and seven. They played the National League East last year, and of course their series against the Giants. The A's have always been pretty good in interleague play. First of 20 interleague games this year. A's will go to. Arizona for a three game series. They'll go to Dodger Stadium for two. They'll go to San Francisco for three. So it helps the travel situation. Yeah. Set. Rotating every three years. You change in divisions. Next year, the A's will. Play the National League Central. So you could get Wrigley Field, could get Miller Park in Milwaukee, you hope. I hope. And go to St. Louis. That's a nice yeah, stop. That's a beautiful stop. Yeah. Close to where you grew up. Could get Cincinnati, could get Pittsburgh. We enjoyed our time in Pittsburgh. Well, new parks. I mean, really, you think yeah. about all those, except for Wrigley, they're all new. And Wrigley may be the one you want to go to more than all. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, the way they've made the serious changes there. So two and two to Eric Sogard. He's leading three to one. All three coming in the third inning. And Sogard swings at that slider, and that's the sixth strikeout for Tyson Ross. So bottom of the fourth coming up, it'll be Kemp. Alonzo and Norris, 3 1 A's.
Now at athletics.com. Voting is exclusively online and available on your computer, tablet, and smartphone. Vote up to 35 times at athletics.com. And you can vote for vote. You can vote for Reddick. You can vote for anybody you want to on your athletics. But vote. Please vote because your vote is important. I've heard that before, huh? Yep. But especially since now that they're all online, no paper ballots, no punching the ballots. Well, it's going to be hard, though, because every player on the Kansas City Royals roster is going to make the all-star team. So they're going to all get voted in. So it's going to be on the roster? Yeah. Every, 25. Just vote everybody in. <laughs> you got eight of nine so far. How about Mike that? Trout's the only one holding up the show. Wow. So are they actually counting those 35, or are they just saying, vote as much as you want? Like, vote often, early, often, whatever? Could be an investigation going on. <laughs> going two to Matt Kemp. Kemp, Alonzo, and Norris here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Jesse Hahn with a 3-1 to one lead. Kemp hit a fly ball to center field in the second inning. And a big overhand curve, and Kemp chases it. And that's out number one. That's a very good sequence of pitches against Matt Kemp. And the curveball, not only was it breaking away, but he was opening up. And that's the old knee buckler again. We've seen a few of those the last few games, and that was a good one from Jesse Hahn. Really just bringing that out, mostly two seam, four seam fastballs. Right, he's just 179 against Han this year. And this one hit by Alonzo high into the air, burns back. He's got just enough room and he makes the kill. So two outs here in the fourth inning. I always think that's smart pitching. <laughs> you can find the big part oh, of the ball. Oh man. And it's big, but not as big as it once was, but still it's big. Anytime center field, and at times that's what's disappointing when you see. A pitcher make a mistake with the pitch inside a fastball inside which allows a hitter to pull the ball shortest distance down the line left field line right field line left your right hand hitter but if you look at left center right center and almost every park in baseball you get a hitter to hit there you have a chance it's going to be run down but it's always been that way right yeah, I mean, of course, I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, think about when you play their Tiger Stadium and oh yeah well park in Cleveland oh, had oh. a huge center field right. it's probably it was probably the center fields were probably larger back then exactly. than they are now. Exactly. Well, Tiger Stadium was 440 straightaway center. We talked about that when we were at Comerica Park, that it was so deep the flagpole was in play because <laughs> he figured nobody would hit it 440 feet. No. But, uh, no, I mean, it's just smart pitch. I remember Fritz Peterson pitching for the Yankees. Stupidly, I would try to pull an outside little two-seam fastball, try to pull it, and I'd play pepper <laughs> with the center fielder. You know, and I go back, how stupid can you be to try to pull that pitch? But that's what happened. You'd see it, you think, oh, I could pull it. And then it hits straight away center sure. field. I mean, you're looking at 385 at Yankee Stadium. Yep. To 385 in right center, left center, right center, and then four plus in center field. And it's almost impossible. I mean, you just think how many home runs Joe DiMaggio could have hit had he not played his home games at Yankee Stadium. I mean, it was a huge yard in that direction. 2 1 pitch to Norris. Sinker 94 miles an hour and the count is two and two. But you go back to what Josh Reddick did and Stephen Vogt. Derek Norris getting a good two seam sinker from Jesse Hahn, a good pitch. But you take those outside pitches instead of trying to pull them, they hit line drives to the opposite field. Both left handers did it to drive in runs. There's that big curve and Norris laid off. Kemp chased it. Norris did not, although pitch that Kemp swung and missed on was probably a little closer to the strike zone. So three and two Norris walked in the second inning and he takes on the outside yep. corner strike three called. So a couple of strikeouts in the fourth for Jesse Hahn. We're moving to the fifth. He's three Padres one.
Brought to you by your Bay Area Hyundai dealers. Great deals on amazing cars are going on now at your Hyundai dealer. Visit buyhyundai.com today. So 3-1, to one, the A's lead the Padres top of the fifth inning. If we look outside, Petco Park. Padres averaging over 31,000 per game and a nice crowd tonight. And I would think during the offseason with all their new players, acquisitions, trades, that their season ticket total, but a nice little bump to it. You would think, yeah. Usually happens in the offseason. You fans get excited, want to be a part of the success of a team. Reddick Zobrist and vote. And Reddick chased a high fastball, so the count only two. Reddick had an RBI single in the third, and he later scored in that inning. Tried to go upstairs again. Two and two, two the count now. Something happened, or what is happening today has never happened before in Major League Baseball. Every game being played, Ray, is an interleague game today. That's never happened before. Wow. Every game. And every game that's being played is the Two home and two away <laughs> four game series. That's happening That's right. Monday through Thursday. Slowly hit with the shift on. Solarte charges, throws, and they got it. So Solarte was the lone man on the left side, so he really had to come charging in, and he made a nice play. Uh, right there, when he caught the ball, and once he caught it, pretty strong throw to be able to get out. The hustling Josh Reddick. Another ground ball out, but it's one of those hit towards the end of the bat. And Josh Reddick did his best to try to beat it out, but could not. Zobra steps in and he takes a pitch a little up and away. So the Houston Astros won. They beat the Colorado Rockies six to three in one of those interleague matchups. So the first place Astros get their 37th win of the year. Close pitch two and one. Keiko got his eighth win. He's now eight and two. Rasmus Homer and George Springer hit two home runs for the victorious Astros. So you're picking your all-star team as you speak, huh? That's right. <laughs> Keiko will be an all-star. Three-one to Zobrist is a high breaking ball, and it's a one-out walk. So Zobrist has walked three times. Now your point about hustling to third base on. A base hit by vote and that enabled Brett Lord to drive him in with a softly hit ball to third base. So 91 pitches for Tyson Ross so lots of pitches. As he faces Stephen vote vote a fly ball to the left and an RBI single to left. Last ball is high. The Rangers beat the Dodgers four to one in Arlington. Four runs, sixth inning. The difference for the Rangers as Giovanni Gallardo evened up his record at six and six. Vote hits it into right field on a bounce, and that's a base hit. Zobrist will head around second. He will go to third. So Stephen Vote with a couple of hits. Yeah, the big hole between first and second. Steven Vogt fine in the hole as he got out front, pulled the ball, the high chopper. Look at the hole between first and second and perfectly placed. And Ben Zobrist is running great. Yep. 
He is running great to third base without any hesitation. And once again, the outfield is so big that you can see the outfielders how deep they're playing. So six hits now for the A's. They've also received four walks. So all kinds of base runners there for the A's so far in this game. Tyson Ross is only three up, three down, and he was the fourth. He's going to stay in there. As he faces Brett Laurie. Laurie's got a couple of hits. In fact, they're both infield hits, and one of them yeah. knocked in a run. So Laurie with that wide open stance waits, and the first pitch is blocked nicely by Norris. In fact, he scooped it. He's done a very good job of the hard slider to have to be prepared to do the job behind the plate. And, you know, you lose 15 pounds, you're quite mobile. Yep. And not that Derek was heavy with the athletics, but he's catching more with the Padres, catching every day. He said he's on pace for about 140 games. Brett Laurie cannot hold up there, and the count is one and one. I think the weather very conducive to uh, playing every day here. Is the low sinker and you know about Brett Laurie when he starts his swing, he doesn't really have that loop to try to get it back. He just keeps going through. There's a shot to center and that's a base hit. So Zobris trots home and the A's lead four to one. So Laurie is three for three with two RBIs. Well, how about that hanging slider? Hanging slider and Brett Laurie crushed it right back up the middle. Watch it coming right at you. That is a great shot, and that is a great piece of hitting by Brett Laurie. Stayed back. A little bit of a knuckleball. Great shot, Bertie. Wow. Right there. That's a big run to get back to, and for Brett Laurie driving. Ben Zobers in twice after Zobers walked the three times. Twice he scored. So the middle part of the batting order doing the job tonight. Getting the hits, getting on base, driving in runs. Here's Muncy, which is inside. So action now. Nick Vincent. And he's warming up quickly. Sinker catches the outside corner. So Reddick grounded out to lead things off, but then a walk and back to back singles and a run in for the A's. Inside corner one and two. I think Muncie thought that was a strike. I don't know. In fact, I know he didn't like it. <laughs> <laughs> if you can read lips, you definitely know he didn't. One two pitch blocked by Norris. So Ross really struggling. He's now at 100 pitches in four and a third. I always like to see catchers do this kind of work during the game because it means they don't have to work on it on the side because they're getting their ball blocking. Work done easily in a game. That's a lot of pitches. And the ratio is not that good. And that's not close. Three and two. So as your runners vote at second and Lori at first. Pitch to Muncie is hit to first. Alonzo spins, cannot get it out of his glove, so he'll take the out at first. He was going to fire to second. And he gets the, the sure thing as he steps on the bag. 
Well, you have to look tonight. Zamarista had one, could have gotten at second base, maybe a double play, and did not. Lonzo, could this have started double play? Really, the grip on the baseball, or maybe just the second thought, maybe get one out instead of taking a chance of the ball going to left field. But it's tough not to get at least one lead runner, but here's an opportunity to potentially walk the eighth place hitter and pitch to the pitcher. Go get him, Jesse. Make him pay. And this is where it's interesting because Tyson Ross does not have the best control right. tonight. He's That's got true. four walks. Make this, this will be five. So maybe Jesse should pull a spring spring training act by the athletics. Just stand there. Stand there, not swing. Get real close to the plate. <laughs> Crowd the pitcher a little bit. So Han will step in with the bases loaded and a run in. So a 25 pitch fifth inning. Tyson Ross and almost get the feeling Ray this would be his last hitter no matter what happens. First pitch is in first strike 89 miles an hour. Strikeouts for Han, six strikeouts for Ross in the game. So I, you know, you, you listen. You can do a lot of different ways to think about it, but you can say, "Hey, I'll make Ross throw two strikes." Exactly. Just, just don't swing because you swing. It's probably going to be a bad pitch, and maybe the slider trying to get you go after a, a pitch out of the strike zone, which would be a slider. So now you got to go one and two the count. What thing about the A's pitchers whenever they stand at the plate they look good. And that's important. It's a good start. Yeah because whether they make contact or not they're looking good. Be careful. Ross picks it up steps on the bag side retired so a run on two hits and a couple of walks for the A's bottom of the fifth coming up four one athletics. I remember as a kid we'd go to a lot of games on Father's Day with with my dad and it was his day and he wanted to spend it at the ballpark and so we would go my brother my mom myself and my dad and just honor him in that way stop by Wendy's this Father's Day weekend June 20th and 21st where 50 cents from every frosty sold will be donated to the Dave Thomas Foundation for adoption Wendy's is committed to helping every child waiting in foster care find a forever family see participating Wendy's for details Father's Day coming up. Coming up on Sunday. Yes, it is. He's with a four to one lead is reached the bottom of the fifth inning. Or the old speed up the game with the clock and watching everything. But one of these one of the 
variables of it was if the pitcher makes like the final out of right. the inning, they they'll give him some slack and will not rush him along. Where where is the clock? It's gone. It's done. So they. Yeah, I, I, but I haven't even seen it here. Yeah, what? it's out there. It's uh, out by the uh, Western Metal Supply. Okay. They just turned it off. Yeah. Yep. So they kind of umpired. Well, it's a good they sort idea. of just leave it alone at that point. Well, the it, clock is sort of out of play yeah. when the pitcher makes the final out. And that's a great idea because. When Jesse Hahn hit the ball and started running, he said, hold on. You know, you don't want to run too hard. Don't want to pull a rich hard in St. Louis. That will always be remembered as a guy who never caught his breath after sprinting to first base on a routine ground ball. This is Solarte leading it off. Solarte, Amarista, and then the pitcher spot. So very well could see a pinch hitter for the Padres. This one tapped right back to Han. Underhands it to first, and that's out number one. So Salarte 0 for 2. Had a chance to talk to Mark Langston, the Angels broadcaster. Of course, he was in the National League, and we were talking about pitchers hitting in the internet play. And Cap, he brought up an interesting point. He said, as a pitcher, I would run long distances. But then as a hitter, I had to think about sprints. Sure, it's a because, whole different deal. Yeah, you go from running trying to get your legs in shape and all of a sudden now you got to get on base and I'm trying to think of the Yankees pitcher who several years ago injured himself basically at home plate and ended up causing time remember the late George Steinbrenner said we got to change this we, we can't let our pitchers be hitting long, wasn't it yeah the yeah right exactly pitcher. exactly right thank you great memory but when that happened it's like, and I don't know how quickly if he ever came back and Marista's hit by the pitch, so he'll head down to first base. Well, Jesse hit three in his last start. I was hoping he could get through this game without hitting another, but 0 2 breaking ball broke sharply in, and there's the curveball. And that's usually when he hits guys. He overthrows the curveball, hangs on a little bit too long, and he gets the right hip. And while these fans are a little bit upset, every hitter who has 0 2 will take one for the team. Especially if it's a curveball. Yeah. So here's the pinch hitter, Will Middlebrooks. Well, Jesse Hunt, been a little bit of an issue. Eighth hit batter this year. So here's Middlebrooks. I haven't mentioned Middlebrooks, but he's another guy that right. the Padres acquired. This offseason from the Boston Red Sox. Yeah, Pablo Sandoval made him expect yeah, it, didn't I'm he? Afraid that uh, Xander Bogarts. <laughs> he has played a little shortstop here, but with those two guys in Boston, he was not going to play much. And we saw him when he first came up. Yeah, and the Red Sox were thinking they had a yeah. up and comer, but struggled since then. There's Vincent, who's going to be the new pitcher for the Padres. That producer down the truck, he immediately said, Debut. That's right. Yes, he is. Lair knows it all. Two and one now to Middlebrooks. Middle, Middlebrooks has struggled here as well, hitting just 227. Now Marista has good speed. Don't know if. It would move a runner down four to one. Probably not. Tap toward Lori who charges. He's going to go to second, and Sogard keeps his foot on the bag for the second out. Well, both players, Lori and Sogard, you see Lori saying to his second baseman, nice job, throwing back across his body, and Sogard, that's when you're thinking as a second baseman, I'm only going to get one. I'm not going to try to come across too quickly and avoid getting the lead runner. So, so guard with Brett Lowry throwing to the outfield side. He said, I'll take care of you. He did. Don't worry about the double play in another inning, not in this inning. Let's get the lead runner. So here's the leadoff man, Will Venable. Venable bounces one. Muncie has it. Throws and he throws it past Hahn. 
And Hahn picks it up. He'll hold on to it, and the Padres will have runners at second and third. Boy, and he had all the time in the world. Yep. Once he caught it, just give your pitcher a chance to get there and lead him, not throw it hard, which he did. And he's going to get an error, but Sogard was there as well. And then, again, ranging too far. And then throwing a bullet, and Jesse Hahn just could not get it. Let him, but let him too much. And Jesse just trying to give him a big target, which he did, a six foot five frame, but a little bit too quick of a throw. Yeah, that's too bad because he really did have plenty of time. Uh, and two cap, we talked about the familiarity, and there's an example of. Where is the second baseman? How close is Sogard? How far do I have to range on a ball like that? And you can take a step and you see the way the ball is hit. You know where your second baseman is. You can stop, get back to back. Sogard's there, innings over. So this turns into a big at bat. It's four to one, bottom of the fifth inning. Corey Spangenberg. Steps in. He's 0 for 2. Strikeout and a ground out for Spangenberg. And he hits this one right side, backhanded by Muncie. He throws to Hahn. He steps on the bag, side retired. So Jesse Hahn works around the air, and a couple of runners stranded by the Padres. Suite for as few as six people. These many suites include a game ticket and a set food package featuring sliders, hot dogs, the first round of beer, and more. For more information, call 510 68 Go A's or visit athletics.com slash mini suites. And my food package alone is worth it. That sounds pretty good. So when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and repair experts with the A's leading four to one. The Padres go to the bullpen. Nick Vincent takes over. Ninth appearance for Vincent, the right hander. So Ross gives up four runs, all earned. That's five walks and six strikeouts. So 110 pitches in five innings for Tyson Ross. Vincent, a couple of good fastballs to enforce him and throws a cutter. And a change up, so as the old saying goes, come out of the bullpen, sick or slap. Yeah. A little bit more of a straight fastball than what we saw from Tyson Ross, who I'm sure are disappointed that he can only go five innings. Top of the order for the A's against Vincent. 
There's a strike, one and one the count. Burns has grounded out twice and struck out. Trying to get aboard. And he hooks this one down the right field line, but foul. Not by a lot. So there's the final numbers for Tyson Ross. So lots of base runners. Seven hits and five walks. Look at the walks, Ray. Yeah. I got two of those walks scoring. That's right. Both by Zim, uh, Ben Zobrist. And at least of those five, a couple have scored or did score. But, well, you said it earlier about he gets the strikeouts and he has the walks. And strikeouts, while they are good, the walks you don't want to see. Billy Burns taking a fastball sort of towards the middle of the plate. A little surprising as he hooked a slider. It was down and in. He knew the fastball was a strike. And amazing some of the pitches he swings at, Billy Burns, and it takes a fastball which is there to hit, but can't pull the trigger. Yeah, that's the one he likes. Fastball yeah. away. Yeah. So one away for Sogard, who's walked, singled and scored, and struck out. Also stole a base. So Sogard moving up to the second spot has done his job tonight, getting on base a couple of times. Sinker drops low. As we have always said for the these video coordinator and Adam Roden, a lot of work to put together. They have their advanced meetings and they did it tonight. Adam had video of all these pictures that the A's have never seen, except someone like Tyson Ross. But they show the video so they have an idea, the movement on the pitches, the arm slot, the release point. And then of course Darren Bush, the A's hitting coach with all the scouting reports and know all the pitches these guys will throw. A lot of work and detail goes into preparing for a series and especially against a team that you don't see very often. Oh, two and two that one. Whistled right into the A's dugout. Walt Horns okay. That close. That close. Well, why don't you move behind the screen. I'll tell him you brought that yeah, up. See? Now right there he's behind the screen evidently where the ball came through that opening he wasn't. Well, it's been around long enough to know that you do find the, the screen. Of course, Walt's such a nice guy. He's probably saying, "Hey, you want a better place? Yeah, this is a weird dugout because this big opening there, where Stephen Vogt or is it Ben Zobris is leaning, and then yeah, most dugouts are long and lean. This one's short and stock. <laughs> Good point. Right? Good point. With a lot of open space. That's right. Yeah." They're shorter and wider, if that makes any sense. Short and stocky. Short and stocky. <laughs> Outside corner, strike three called. Sogar. Not happy with Mike DeMiro. Well, good night for Eric Sogar, and he's upset as he had a walk in a and a base hit, but strikeouts his last two, and especially that one he felt was moving off the plate. They go take a look at it as I'm sure Adam Roden will cue it up for him. That's what you used to do when you got called out on a strike, right? You went right to the video room. Check it out. No, I just yelled at the umpire when I went back out at the plate. <laughs> hey, just you went to look at the high def monitor <laughs> yeah, and right. see if that was a strike. <laughs> right. Well, the difference now with all the video and everything that you could queue up in just an instant, that at one time before there was so much video, that when a pitcher threw a pitch and gave up a home run, he came to the dugout. I made a great pitch. Yeah. I said, "Do you know where that pitch was?" <laughs> and you couldn't really tell him. He said, "In his mind, he knew he's trying to throw it on the corner. It's right down the middle." In, but, in his mind, it was oh, a good exactly. Pitch. In his mind, his release point was exactly where he wanted to be thrown. <laughs> and now they could go look at the video, and the catcher could say, "Look at where you thought it was, and look where it actually was." That's a good call. <laughs> Well, it's not uncommon you go in the Hayes clubhouse or any clubhouse after the game. Oh, yeah. And, and there will be a player still in full uniform sitting there yeah. going over each one of his at-bats. Happens all the time. Billy Butler's doing an Anaheim. Yeah. 
And of course that video area wide open. And the visiting clubhouse at Angel Stadium. One and two now to Reddick. But you know the thing that Adam Roden does so well, and I'm sure the video coordinators do, but we've seen it with Adam. He'll take, for example, Tyson Ross, and it's not him in between pitches. It's a kind of a rapid fire. Sure. He cuts out all the, the stuff in between. So you, you see every pitch that Tyson Ross is throwing, the starting pitch for tonight, and then all the relief pitchers, and then the, the hitters can sit in front of the video and watch all of that before they come out and play. And <laughs> that was a good pitch. And I think Reddick, <laughs> Reddick got a break. As Vincent thought it was a strike. Well, Reddick can thank maybe Eric Sogard with this pitch because that might have been better. I think Reddick to see with the bat, he started to throw his bat. Yeah, he was ready yeah. to head out to right field. So hit a rope, hit a ball at some place. And he skies this one to center. Venable backs up, settles underneath it. Side retired. Nick Vincent out of the Padres bullpen has a three up, three down. Sixth inning. Bottom of the sixth coming up. Big hitters for the Padres. Started with Josh Reddick opposite field close play at the plate, but Eric Sogard able to slide around Derek Norris And there's one run battered in and how about Stephen Bolt following him with another bullet to left field and also Excellent base running Ben Zobris going all the way to third base and the reason because of this a chopper down the third base line by Brett Laurie No chance for Tyson Ross another run scores the third and then Brett Laurie This was no cheapy up the middle a bullet on a slider a hanger Scoring Ben Zobers. He had walked three times and a nice conversation with Ty Waller at first base by the always effervescent Brett Laurie. Find out what's possible with ATT. Call 1 800. Pick ATT mobilizing your world. Bottom of the sixth inning, it'll be Upton, Kemp, and Alonzo. So the power hitters up for the Padres. Still think we should put a microphone on Brett Laurie. I agree. I mean, just to see the smile on the face of Todd Waller, first base after that base hit up the middle. You just know that Brett Lorry, the Energizer Bunny, he is exciting to watch. Setting up inside to Upton, and it's fouled at the plate. So one and two up in a fly ball to center and a pop out to second. Good season 13 home runs 41 RBIs for Upton. Huge foul. Jesse Hahn. Probably was just getting used to pitching in this ballpark <laughs> and then traded in the offseason. Pretty good ballpark to pitch in, I would imagine. 
But really get got traded to the A's, which is another pretty good park to pitch in the Coliseum. Especially at night time when the ball doesn't carry or the foul territory. You maybe get some outs on fly balls that are in the seats in other parks. Jesse trying to get his fourth win. And probably the goal for him to get to 500 or better by the All Star break. Lori, nice play. Flips to first. Mutsey digs it out. Heck of a play on both ends. One away. And I don't know that Lori had to hurry as much as he did. Off balance throw, flat footed, but he wanted to check the picking ability of Max Muncy. Up throw, and look at the pick on the other end. And Max Muncy comes up with it perfectly, but the range of Brett Lori, the quick release, you don't even see up into the picture yet. But pitchers always love plays like that. Swain Lori making the play and stretching at third. And picking it first with Muncy. And that's not an established first baseman over there making that kind of play either. Here's Kemp who takes a strike. <laughs> Swing and a miss, chasing that breaking ball. Kemp a fly ball to center and a strikeout. Just two home runs for Matt Kemp. That's hard to figure out. I'm sure Kemp trying to figure out how he's only got two home runs. Maybe the pine tar is too high on his bat. I remember in Los Angeles with the Dodgers between Puig and Ethier, Kemp was there and. Uh, Kid in center field. I mean, they've got a whole bunch of outfielders, and so he gets traded here with a chance of playing every day. And Kemp last year hit 25 home runs. And the year before that, he was banged up. He really didn't play very much. Left toe, Stephen Voter, left right, left hand. He's got a little bit of every place. Yeah, and him on left toe, and oh. of course it missed the shin guard. Three and two now to Kemp. Yonder Alonzo waits in the on deck circle. Nice play by Lori. Throws to first in time. He's the other. Backhanded behind the bag. So two outs. Well, it was a year ago yesterday when Jesse Hahn, as a Padre, pitching in New York, got his first major league win. One year ago yesterday. So I'm sure he remembers that day quite well. Hey, looks like the same guy pitching for the A's this year. Good nice curveball. curveball. Wow. Well, they can. Scott's looking at it and say, it's pretty impressive. And the pant legs pulled up high, but these socks look a little bit better than those solid blues last year. Got the little gold, gold and green stripes. I'll make it his 13th start this year. But the good news, Cap, the thing that Jesse Hahn says is the blister that he developed on the middle finger of his right hand, pitching hand in Kansas City, it was back on the 18th of April. He said it's a non issue. And that's good because usually, or at least there are times that when a blister forms on a pitching hand, finger of a, of a pitcher, then it kind of keeps coming around. But Jesse said it's callous and it's. Not a problem, which is good news. 3 0 pitch catches the outside corner. Alonzo a ground out and a fly ball to center field. Yeah, that can linger for a whole year if you're not careful. That one driven to left center field. Zobrez tracks it down. Nice play by Ben Zobrez. So good defense by the A's in this half. 
of the sixth inning. We're on to the seventh, 4-1 Athletics. On the A's lead, the Padres, CSNCalifornia.com. CSN California, I should say, has added every remaining A's game to the schedule. Join us tomorrow at 12.30 p.m. for an A's baseball breakfast. It's these Padres. It's presented by Black Bear Diner. Every A's game will now be televised this season. So we'll be on the air tomorrow. First, get, first pitch scheduled for 12.40. We'll also be on the air on Thursday, the day game at the Coliseum. That will be an A's baseball breakfast telecast as well. Yep. So busy, Matt. That's right. Join us tomorrow. Ray and I will join up with Vince Catronio. It's a small radio booth over there, but we'll be nice and cozy. And yeah, so we're all friends. Yeah. Sure. But you're right. It is pretty small. Yeah. It'll be all right, though. Well, it would be better that all three of us be together instead of one sitting in the booth next door <laughs> and having to knock on the window and say, can I talk? Can I talk? Yeah. Well, Ben Zobris have a night. He has been very patient, and one of the best things, Kuiper, is to see him running as well as he is. And I mentioned the Kansas City series that Jesse Hahn pitched, then also had to leave and have surgery on his knee after that series. Jesse, that's the old curveball, trying to get that curveball. All he had to do is look at the video of his first start or his first win a year ago. Two zero to Zobrist, and that's high. Three and zero. They don't want to pitch to Ben Zobrist tonight. Fredo. And there it is. It's a four-pitch walk, and Zobrist has walked four times tonight. First time he's ever done that in his career. He scored twice tonight so far. Kansas City Athletics hosts the Kansas City Royals as we turn back the clock to 1965, Saturday, June 27th. The then KCAA's club feature Burt Caminares, John Blumen Odom, who will both throw out the game ceremonial first pitches. Can't wait for that. 20,000 fans will receive a Charlie O throwback t shirt presented by Ross, which depicts the iconic A's Mule mascot from the 1960s and the 70s. First pitch to vote. Misses outside. So five straight balls by Nick Vincent to open up the seventh inning. Case like that, everything outside. Catcher's got to move inside. Derek Norris inside at least to get the pitcher to finish his pitch. See if he does that. And maybe Stephen Vote will look for it. Hit a ball in the seats in right field. Vote two for three, two singles and an RBI. Missed again. He's just not finishing the pitch. nope. pitches six in a row. Leaving them out there. 
Brett Laurie is a right handed hitter in the on deck circle. He'd throw to the outside to him and finish, but he could do the same to the lefty by going inside. But Laurie, a good night as well. Laurie with three hits, Vote with a couple, Zob with four walks. Here's the interim manager, Dave Roberts. Bud Black fired today. And now it's three and one. Lori to follow. It would be Muncie after that. Well, Stephen Bodu has been struggling as of late. In fact, coming into tonight, Ofer's last 14, so he has to be thrilled with. Couple of hits tonight. One of them knocking in a run. Good swing there. He got a 3 1 fastball out over the plate. Look up what I'd like to see is a manager say to his catcher, you know what? Don't even look over here. You call your own pitch out, throw over, step off, slide steps. That'd be a good way to speed up the game. It would be. I mean, they're talking <laughs> about pitchers and, and hitters. Absolutely. Yep. And, and you it's know, true. it really started. Tony Russo started with Terry Stomp. I keep going back to that, but you know, everybody since then has decided to do it. And you think about having to look in the dugout every pitch, every, pitch. every time a runner's on base, you got to look in. And you see Dave Roberts, who as a bench coach, he might have been the one for Bud Black doing what he's doing now as a manager. But still, it's a, it's a lot of time. You no see? question. Yes. Yeah. Said he's swinging. Yeah, of course. Three and two. He's going to be swinging. And that means he's probably going to be running. You're not going to pitch out. You're not going to do anything. Maybe a slide step. Do something to think about the runner at first. Zobrist so runs again, and the ball's bounced to the right side. Spangenberg has it. So Vote is retired, but Zobrist in scoring position. See, Vote came very close to doing the same thing he did last at bat. Spangenberg this time, though, playing a little bit more in the hole to take up some of that space, and maybe the ball wasn't hit as hard. But I know Jason Kenneth seems like the Kansas City Royals allow that. Ned Yost, former catcher, allows Swiss Perez. Jason Kendall was there. Ned Yost did the same thing. Don Wakamatsu pretty much is, is told Perez, you know, hey, do it yourself. That's how you learn. Yep. I mean, you get a feel of the game anyway. So here's Laurie, who's at a big night. He's three for three. With three singles and two RBIs. Fastball strike called 90 miles an hour. Vincent what a three quarter delivery. Billy Butler getting the night off. Sonny Gray, eight wins yesterday. Eighth win. Lori with a big swing. He missed it. So a quick 0 2 to Brett Laurie. These were seven hits in the game. The Padres have just one. The Padres have been kind of a hit and miss offense. They've scored a lot of runs this year, but. From what it sounds like they've kind of come in bunches. <laughs> the one hit was Venable, who should have been awarded first base right. for being hit, right. ends up getting the first and only hit. A booming double to center field. Misses down and away to even the count at two and two. He's with three in the third and one in the fifth. Padres got their only run in the third inning. Jesse's pitch count is good. Missed again, three and two. That's a good take, too. As many times as we have seen him flail at those pitches outside, and maybe a little bit more that Brett Laurie is picking up the slider spin and laying off the pitches outside. Max Muncy waiting. So the payoff to Laurie here it is, and he chased it. Swing and a miss. 
little bit outside. So Lori is retired for the first time tonight. Nine strikeouts for the Padres pitchers. Oh, he went to the fastball. Maybe Brett thinking another slider, but this time ball straight and kind of a hurry up swing, thinking that he's not throwing me the slider. So two away, it's up to Muncie. Muncie is 0 for 3, and he takes a first pitch strike. Muncie a strikeout, a fly ball to the left, and then a ground out. Zolpris led off this inning with a walk. He's at second, dancing around a little bit. And that one missed inside. Pomeran starts to think about getting loose. Yeah, this might be because of a possible pinch hitter. Because Jesse Hunt still just at 87 pitches. So maybe that's just a just in case. Just in case. Once he fouls it straight back. But that's the difference in American National League. A's have a nice lead, but maybe Bob Melvin thinking pitch count at 87. Have somebody ready just in case. And maybe it's just in case the bases are loaded right. and then right. let's try to bust this open. Exactly. And thinking that maybe Jesse Hound one more inning anyway. So six very good innings and you turn it over to the bullpen. Not would depend what happens with Max Muncie and this at that. Chase to high fastball and Muncie is retired, so he's 0 for 4. A's strand a runner at second. Seventh inning stretch coming up from Petco 4 1. The A's lead the Padres. San Diego. So the Warriors will try to take care of business tomorrow night. Good luck. Yeah, absolutely. Big game last night. Yeah, they, they played great last night. There's the breakdown for outs for Jesse Hahn. Eight ground ball outs, four strikeouts. He's been very good so far tonight. Working into the seventh inning. And that's great after just three and two thirds in his last start. So throwing just the 68 pitches against the Texas Rangers at the Coliseum. Short outing. But if you have a short outing and your team has its first come from behind, walk off, take it. Especially since he left the game trailing four to two. Inside. And he went just three and two thirds innings, huh? Yeah. 
much better tonight. Yep. More action out in the Padres bullpen. Laurie, tough play. Backs up, throws from the grass, and not a catch. Well, unless he's saying he pulled his foot off the bag. Max Muncy, I think he's telling Bob Melvin that he kept his foot on the bag. And that was a close play. And again, a great play by Brett Laurie. Thrown from the outfield. Grant short his arm straight. And it is very close. So Bob Melvin is not going to challenge it. So it will be a hit for Norris. Another nice play by yeah. Lori. Just not a whole lot he could do. We've seen Norris enough, and he runs yeah. pretty well. That's the that's the biggest thing because if he'd stopped and tried to stop and make a strong throw, probably at that point would not have had enough time. And that went to right field, hit pretty well. Reddick's going back. He's got just enough room. Reaches out in front of the wall to make the catch for out number one. Had it all the way. That is a bright sign, hanging breaking ball, and Solardi had to provide his own power. And even with the shorter fences, <laughs> 11 feet deeper, it's a can of corn, not even close. You don't even hit the warning track. I know. So one away, here's Amarista, the shortstop. Marista bounces one. Sogard ranging far to his left spins and throws and gets Amarista. Very nice play. Talk about control of your body after making a play and the momentum. Watch how Sogard's able to stop. Catches the ball and then turns around and makes a perfect throw to first base. Remarkably stretching as far as he could, did not leave his feet, yet able to take a couple of steps after he spun 360 and make a perfect throw to first. So within a matter of five pitches, close play at first, fly ball deep to right, great play by Sogard. And he's one out away as Melvin Upton is going to pinch hit. That is formerly B.J. Upton of the Tampa Bay Atlanta Braves. Changed his name, hurt himself, went on the disabled list. So he just came back off yeah. the disabled list. In fact, on Monday he came yeah. off the DL. Uh, I said yesterday he pinched hit for Shields. And Shields, pretty good pit hitting pitcher, and, and that didn't go over too well, evidently. But Benson uh, or uh, Upton Jr. made out. Tenth at bat. Oh, and one to Upton, and he lines one to left, and that's a hit. Here comes Norris, and they're going to hold him up. Zobris gets it in. So Norris gets held up, and it's first and third, two outs. Then a bit of a different approach with the leg kick by Upton, and we saw him with Tampa Bay where he just kind of uh, curled the front foot. But good job by Zobris, and with the club down as they are, did not want to take a chance sending Norris, which... Kind of wonder why not, but Norris, especially as well as he runs, but Zobris, a great job charging the ball on that. Probably helped uh, Hoffman make the decision at third. And really, for the first time tonight, the crowd is into it. 30,018 tonight here at Petco Park, and Bob Melvin's coming out. The hitter is Will Venable, left handed hitter. Well, and Han do up second. So, Pomerantz's job is to get a couple of hitters out. And then maybe put a pinch hitter in for him. So, when it's time for change, think speedy oil change and tune-up. Your oil change tune-up and repair experts. Pomerantz coming in to face Will Venable.
Longevity Saturday, June the 20th against the Angels. Be one of 15,000 fans to walk away with a gnome off the Athletics Ace pitcher where the ball really lights up from solar panels built into the gnome. Get your tickets now by calling 877-493-BALL or visit athletics.com slash tickets. Sunny Gray Gnome next Saturday at the Coliseum. Next Saturday, this Saturday. This is Monday. The Hayes will be back home Wednesday. Jesse Hahn will get a start next weekend as he's smiling probably the former teammate across the way. As Jesse pitched well, six and two thirds, 94 pitches. Responsible for a couple of runners on base and hoping Drew Pomerantz can take care of business here. So Pomerantz will face Will Venable. So a big spot in the game as Venable is the tying run. So his sixth relief appearance. Drew Pomerantz. So Norris is at third. Upton is at first. Upton with the great speed. Outfield playing very deep for Will Venable. Venable tonight strikeout, RBI double, reached on an air. And the first pitch, a breaking ball, and he won after it, rolled at five. It's a good pitch for a you get a hitter to swing at because probably a curveball not in the strike zone, but there are times as we have seen where a hitter will see a curveball on first pitch and not swing. That way you throw up for a strike, that's okay, but Joe Palmer has came close to getting an out on one pitch. Good breaking ball, but Venable laid off, and it's a little bit low. One and one the count. There's the knuckle curve. Great shot. You can see the the grip by Drew Pomerantz with the knuckle curve. Allows him to throw it hard and break sharply. Strike taken by Venable one and two. How about that fastball. Slide step at 93. That's that's excellent. So he can go another heater bump it up maybe a mile or two or come back with another hard curveball. Upton with a big lead at first. And he runs, pitches blocked by vote. So Upton will get a stolen base. Pomeranz will concentrate on the hitter. But a good block keeping Derek Norris from scoring. Again, a knuckle curve. Again, a great block by Stephen Vogt moving sharply and quickly to his left. Taking the, the bounce into his chest protector. And that's showing the pitcher confidence to. Throw the curveball, throw it hard, even in the dirt to get the block. Two, two pitch. And it's a foul ball, and it's off of vote, and he's wow. shaking up. It was a high fastball. You know the way he reacted, it's almost as if it wasn't a foul ball. It was not. He missed it. That's a swing and miss, and that's why Voter was looking around for it because the hitter swung through it, no foul ball, and maybe it's a cross up, okay? Because the way Stephen Volt reacted, I mean, that's strike three. And at this point, there's nothing. No, he can't nothing do anything do. about it. I mean, just to check on Stephen Volt, but the way he went after the ball, he knew the ball was not foul. Otherwise, if it's off his chest, mask, or something, They're concerned because of where it hit it. But it's going to be hard to get him out. So I guess they're really going to foul ball. But great camera shot to show that Venable completely missed it. And I guess the reaction showed Stephen Bolt. He knew he missed it. Maybe he's explaining to Mike DeMiro, how did you miss it? Yeah. Yeah, there. Now the question is, what 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 can you do? Yeah. Well, I mean, watch the bat. 
me swings late. See, he yeah, swung that, under it. Yeah, he, that that replay right yeah. there, you could tell he did not hit right. it. Right. And you watch Stephen Vogt. Vogt tells you that he didn't. Because if it's a foul ball, Stephen Vogt does not turn around looking for the baseball. Because he knew he got crossed up. He knew he completely missed it. Well, that could be a big call. Or oh, a non call. No, exactly. I mean, basically, it, yeah, it goes as a foul ball. And. In the dirt, and now it's three and two. Another great block. And again, on the knuckle curve, Stephen. Boy, and you especially have to get it crossed up and taking a ball off your head. Taking time almost coming out of the game and now having to block a ball in the dirt. So the 3 2, and it's chopped slowly towards Sogard. He's got it. He throws to first in time. Side retired. So Pomeranz does his job. Padre strand a pair, and we're headed to the eighth. Still 4 1 A's. Sportsnet Central all the way through the playoffs. Game six coverage begins tomorrow, 4 p.m. with a special two-hour event on Comcast Sportsnet Bay Area. The coverage that you expect from the home of the authentic Warrior fans. So, the Warriors can wrap up their first NBA championship in 40 years tomorrow in Cleveland. If there's a game seven, it'll be Friday night at Oracle Arena. So when it's time for change, think Speedy Oil Change and Tune-Up, your oil change tune-up and repair experts. This is Corey Mazzoni, who was just recalled from the minor leagues. Uh, Will Myers was put on the disabled list today, and they called up Corey Mazzoni, right-hander. So he faced his Simeon, a pinch hitter, and then Burns. Yeah, Kipe. Uh See Bob Melvin talking to Stephen Vogt in the dugout, and it was almost as if he's telling him, You're not going back out. And we're told that Josh Fagan is putting on his gear, of course, probably either still in the dugout or in the bullpen. But the way Stephen Vogt has taken some shots tonight, maybe Bob Melvin's concerned about sending him back out. And amazingly, he was able to block a ball in the dirt after taking a shot off his head on the cross up. And you know. That's scary stuff. And Billy Butler's hitting him in the pitcher spot, so uh, it's very scary because when it, I mean, and you think yesterday, talking to Stephen Vogt after the game, remember he took the ball off his helmet that went into the stands behind home plate. 
and I said, how are you feeling? And he said, I could have done a lot better without that last one off my head. So you look at that yesterday, comes to San Diego, takes the, the beating tonight, and Billy Butler will hit for Pomerantz as he's in the on-deck circle, but I wouldn't be surprised if Feckley comes out for the eighth. And that got the umpire. Well, Mike DeMuro and off the catcher's mitt, off the mask, at Derek Norris giving some extra time to home plate umpire, and that flipped his mask. And hey, do you think that catchers and umpires getting hit? Do you think it's happening more than maybe five, six years ago, or, or is, are we just more conscious? We're of more it? conscious yeah. of it because I, I've talked to catchers of the past, and Terry Steinbach is bench coach when he was, and with uh, the Twins, and you know you, you get. You don't really avoid them. I mean, it's un it's hard to avoid them, especially with the ball just ticking the bat. You, you can see how that one just went off the catcher's mitt of Derek Norris into the home plate umpire. Well, that could have very easily gone off his mask or helmet. So here's Butler. He's going to pinch hit for it'll be Pomerant. So Butler, no DH in the National League Park, so. Been sitting this one out, but he'll hit here. Lead off walk to Simeon. Facing Corey Mazzoni. This is a different type of game. You might be a little bit more inclined, although American League pitchers don't necessarily bunt because relievers don't even get to hit. They don't even get to take batting practice. So to put them up in a bunt situation, I don't think that would be fair to them or even fair to A's trying to get a sacrifice from a, of a from a pitcher. Especially reliever. Yeah, and really, unless it's you know, the winning run in yeah. the bottom of the ninth, you would not use a pinch hitter yeah. to bunt. Exactly. Unless it's just the, 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 your one shot right. to win the game. Simming hit in the eighth spot tonight. He's walked intentionally. His at bat in the sixth and now or the fifth and now walked to lead off the eighth. Simeon runs and the ball's hit to right field base hit. Simeon will round second and he will make it easily to third. So Billy Butler executes the hit and run. Oh, it looked like Simeon had his head down and he was running to second like maybe he was stealing. Either way, it's good execution by the ace. First and third, nobody out. Well, one of the ways to get a struggling hitter out of a slump is to do this. Whether or not it was a hit and run or not, he saw him running. And Simeon actually was not hit by the ball, fortunately, because he was going down, heard contact, almost got hit, and it was the second baseman vacating the right side. So it worked well, hit and run or not. Infield comes in for Burns. He goes after a high fastball, fouls it straight back. Burns tonight is 0 for 4. A couple of ground outs, a couple of strikeouts. We haven't said Billy Burns is 0 for 4 <laughs> a whole lot lately. No, we haven't. Ninety-five miles an hour from Mazzoni. Ball inside and now two and one. That's a great opportunity for Billy Burns, especially with the infield in. It means he could slap a ball through the infield, hit one of the little dunkers over the infielders who are playing in because the outfield creates a little bit larger distance between infielders and outfielders. Did not go three and one. Great opportunity for the A's to add to their four to one lead. And Butler swings through a fastball at 96 miles an hour. 
which is a challenge fastball and just a little surprise he didn't make contact. There's the payoff pitch to Burns and he pops a foul back second level just to our left. Mazzoni a hard thrower. So another 3 2 to Burns trying to put it in play. And he does, and it's going to get through a little jam shot in the center field. Simeon comes in to score, and it's 5 to 1. So the infield was in, and that helped Burns get it into center field. How sweet is that? I mean, you talk about a ball that. He could have thrown it harder through the infield, but the fact they were there might have broken his bat, no stride, and that's as sweet as hit you're ever going to see. Just out of the reach. And you might wonder why Amarisa didn't dive for the ball. The runner was a third going to score anyway, even if he dives, knocks it down. So Burns will take it. As he is one for five with an RBI. And good news tonight for the A's. Three walks have scored. You always like to see that column filled up. And they have had really have had base runners all over the place tonight. And here's Sogard. Sogard to bunt. And he bunts it foul. Sogard. If he's trying to sacrifice, yeah. he needs to stay in there and yeah, sacrifice. Exactly. Looks like he tried to drag bunt yeah. that one, and I, I'm not sure that he would be doing anything here but a sacrifice bunt if he turns if, if he was going show bunt. Yeah, if he was going to bunt, but I have to wonder if he was trying to do that. And not give it a butt sign. He was kind of doing it on his own to maybe try to sneak a, a bunt, maybe a base hit. Yeah, I think I, now they're looking at that. He, he might have been doing it on his own. Well, I'm not sure this is the time to no. drag for a, a bunt no. hit. That no. doesn't make any sense. I agree. I agree. And if you're going to do it, you might as well square it. Whether you, if you're not giving the sign and at least turn around and put a couple of more runners in scoring position. You already have one at second. Sogard is one for three. Single and a walk and a run score. No two pitches hooked foul into the seats. Talk about how a batting order can dictate whether a hitter will bunt or not. Well, how about a, a base runner and Billy Butler at second base? And maybe that's why Bob Melvin did not put a sacrifice on. And Billy Butler. I think if you try to bunt, it has to be a perfect one where the third baseman has to clearly come in and charge it. Won't happen now with two strikes, but before that, a little difficult to advance it. Slap towards center. Venable coming in. He's got it. So that's the first out of the inning. And now Reddick will hit. Reddick's got an RBI single tonight. He's one for four. The Diamondbacks are leading the Angels seven to three in the ninth inning. So the Diamondbacks trying to help out the rest of the AL West. This one hit high in the air toward left, up and in a little bit. And he's got it for the second. What if Bob Melvin left a note for his good friend Chip Hale, who's now manager of the Diamondbacks? Help us out. Go into uh, Bubba Hawkins' clubhouse and the manager's office there at Angel Stadium. And we may have. Put a little note in the drawer. Chipper opens up. Let's see what's in here. Oh, my good friend Bob Melvin left me a note. He said, beat up on the Angels. Can he do it five tonight, Kev? Can he get five walks tonight? Ben's overs. Or will he be anxious to swing the bat and try to drive it? He takes a first pitch strike to Mazzoni. Well, let's see four walks very often. Yeah. So I got him at three and one in the first, three and two in the third, three and two in the fifth, three and oh in the seventh. Mm. 
and he takes low. So the count one and one. The Mariners are leading the Giants five to one in the ninth inning. Another one of the AL West and NL West interleague games going on this week. Slider. Zobrist a good take, two and one. Astros won, Rangers won so far. Evan Scribner loosening up and Kat just down in the on deck circle. I see Stephen Vogt. So <laughs> if Bob Melvin is trying to convince him he's not going to go back in, and we will see if that's just a hit or. There's a shot to center field base hit. Here comes Billy Butler, but they're going to hold him. Venable juggled it. But Mike Gallego was holding yeah. Billy Butler up. And Butler had stopped at third even before Venable juggled it. So really not a whole lot you could do. You didn't know Venable was going to juggle it. Exactly. And that had been really kind of running into an out had he sent him because again he would have gotten the ball. Imagine Billy Butler approaching third as Venable came up with it. It's been an interesting night for Max Venable. So Billy Butler running hard thinking he wants to score but. Turns around and said, "Guys, did you know he's going to bobble it?" No, I didn't. So Volt will hit with the bases loaded and two outs. A run in for the A's, looking for more. The first pitch is belted to right, kept back, and that baby's gone. And that's a grand slam for Stephen Vote. I think he feels okay. <laughs> I think he feels just fine. <laughs> His first game this year at Minnesota against Phil Hughes. And tonight it looked as if he might be coming out of the game. He might now. After circling the bases on his second career grand slam. And, and just think if Billy Butler had been thrown out at the plate, if Venable hadn't Bobble the ball. Who knows what could have happened to Stephen Vogt? A chance to hit, and he hits the slam. That is a great night. Take the rest of it off. We'll see. So, five RBI night for Stephen Vogt. Three hits, five RBIs, including a grand slam. Now, well, first pitch hitting. And right down the middle. Stephen Volt knew he got it, and that's a great feeling right there to know that you hit it well enough. And one that's off after taking a shot off the head and almost coming out of the game before he blocked the ball in the dirt from Pomerantz. And Marista has it. Throws in time to get Lori. Side retired, but damage done. A score five. Four of them thanks to a grand slam by Stephen Vogt. So the A's busted open. It's 9 to 1.
Here's our game summary brought to you by your local Do Toyota dealers. 9, 11, and 1 for the A's, 1, 3, and 1 for the Padres. The big five spot in the eighth inning broke the game open. It was a grand slam by Steven Vogt. He's got five RBIs. Jesse Hunt, another good start for the young right hander. Tyson Ross, not so much. Seven hits, five walks, four earned runs in five innings. And the only run for the Padres was driven in by Will Venable. So, good start so far to this four game series against the Padres. Two here at Petco and then two at the Coliseum on Wednesday and Thursday. So, Stephen Vogt stays out there. That's a good sign. Well, that is. And you're right, Kate. Hitting a grand slam makes it feel a lot better. Eric O'Flaherty, who saw Scribner warming up, but with the five run inning, the big crooked number, they had one in the third inning, scoring three, and so Eric O'Flaherty has not been given a lot of work. He's on the disabled list and, and a little shoulder, left shoulder stiffness, but he is back making his 11th appearance. Very inflated earn run average, and as we have talked about relievers who have that kind of an ERA, it takes a while to get it back down to respectability, so he will try that tonight. So probably gets an inning of work, maybe two. So Spangenberg leads it off when it's time for change. Think speedy oil change and tune up your oil change tune up and repair experts. So O'Flaherty to face Spangenberg, Upton and Kemp here in the bottom of the eighth inning. Nine to one, the A's lead. Pomeranz gets the big out, which yeah. at that time you're like, whew, man, it's yeah. kept it right. four to one. And then 15 minutes later, it's nine to one. Stephen Vaughn had not hit a home run since the 31st of May, so it had been a half a month, but not like tonight will change a few things. Zobrist. Plays it on a hop, and Spangenberg has his first hit. So that's just the fourth hit in the game for the Padres. The Padres lose this game, and the Arizona Diamondbacks win, and the Diamondbacks are leading 7 3 in the ninth inning. The Padres will fall into fourth place in the National League West. That's not expected. Well, it's hard to figure out. I guess sometimes you can put together a talented group, but hmm. do they gel? Yeah. And I know that's kind of hard to. I guess put a definition on. And maybe there isn't one. But you just it either happens or it doesn't. Well, I think it proves a lot because we've seen around baseball this year that you have teams who have really loaded up. Look at the Mariners. I mean, look sure. what the Mariners were supposed to do. And granted, it's still some Sean Kelly loosening up. There's still a lot of baseball left, but the expectations before season begins. I mean, spring training and you know, off season before the spring, and then the spring training, everybody's so excited. And you get off to a slow start. Sure. And Red Sox. Oh, how about Red, that? Red there's... Sox lost again. They're, they've lost seven in a row. And the Red Sox are 11 games under 500. I am always leery in spring training of of the teams that make the big yep. splashes in the offseason that everybody talks yep. about. And, you know, sometimes it works, but more often than not, it doesn't. And it always makes me go, I don't know. Uh -huh. I know. You're right. Oh. And I think it's easy for certain people to say, well, this team's going to win and, you know, go all the way and, you know, win, win, win. And then very easy to forget that they said that in the offseason or in spring training when the clubs that they predicted would win mm -hmm. fail. But I, I think you can talk uh, parity, you can talk all you want about the game of baseball. Bottom line, it's still a hard game to play. And it doesn't mean that if players have performed, I mean, look at Ian Kinsler, the year. That you've expected him to have, and he's not. And so, uh, you just you, you kind of play it out, and the teams aren't supposed to win, do. And the teams that are winning, and then start to fall apart a little bit. I mean, how about the White Sox? 
Yeah. The White Sox fall into that category right. that we're talking about where they got a lot of hype in the winter time because yeah. they signed a closer, they got Samarja, they got Melky Cabrera, they got yeah. Adam Roche. I mean, these are major significant signings. Mm -hmm. A lot of money spent, good players, but you just don't know. But a lot of people are like, hey, I, I like I like that yeah. team. Sure. But there's you know, there's four or five teams that in the offseason made big splashes. Oh, big time. And everybody fell in love with them on paper, and it's just not happening. The Padres are one of them. And to be honest, I still cannot fault a manager in the case of Bud Black. He has to be the fall guy. And, and you, you blame a manager for a team that has been put together that's not having success. So you have to blame somebody, and it's usually the man who is leading the ship. And you know, we talked about this during the pregame show, and it has to do with Bud Black and the Padres. But Bud Black was here eight and a half years, and in that eight and a half year period, yeah. he had four different general managers. That's amazing. Now that's a lot. Yeah. And A.J. Preller, who is the, the new GM, took over at the end of last season. He said, I don't blame a new GM if if maybe at some point he wants a guy that he chose. Uh -huh. But it also makes it difficult yeah. on the manager that is there who is considered a, a good manager. Swing going to miss on three and one by Young or Alonzo. So the count is full one out. Spangenberg at second Kemp at first. Eric Flaherty, base hit, line drive, walk on four pitches to Matt Kemp. Man, that's a good pitch. In fact, it was right there. Alonzo didn't like it. I, huh. man, that looked like a pretty good pitch. I'm not sure it was that bad of a pitch to no. cause that type of reaction. Let's see. Oh, that's that's huh. right down the middle. Let's look at watch the front knee. That's a strike. Oh, that's plenty of strike. Can I? There's nothing about that pitch that made it a ball. No. You saw it crossed over that front leg, and it was right at the knees, and it was right in the heart. So that's the second out, and here's Norris. Norris has walked, struck out, and a single. Another team that made a lot of changes and has not played up to expectations, Miami. Cool. Right? I mean, that's another team that, right? that falls into that category. Especially the money they spent on the one player. He's having a nice year, yeah. but he can only do so much. Good slider there by O'Flaherty. So, I mean, that, that's five teams right there that we just rattled off that did a lot in the offseason. A lot of people fell in love with them on paper. and. So far this year, they have not performed up to expectation, but there is still nearly 100 games left for most teams or somewhere in that area. So there's time, and nobody's really running away with any division. And maybe that's exactly what baseball wants and yep. needs is to have the parity so that you can have a full season without, I mean, Ideally, you want as many teams possible down the stretch vying for some sort of a position in postseason, whether it's a division or wild card. I think you're going to have that this year. Yeah. Got might be an all star too. Stephen Bolt, the way he's going, <laughs> especially after a night last like tonight. Great job of hitting the opposite field to drive in a run, finds the hole on the right side to. Set a runner to third and then tops it, caps it with a grand slam. Three and two now to Norris, so three, two, two outs. Spangenberg and Kemp will take off. So pitch number 21 coming up from O'Flaherty. And that one's driven to center, but playable for Burns, who backs up. He's got it side retired. A couple of runners stranded, and we're going to the ninth inning from San Diego. A's are leading 9-1. to one.
is presented by authority of the Oakland Athletics and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Athletics Investment Group, LLC. Second fireworks night of the season is set for Friday, June the 19th, after the A's take on the Angels, 6.35 p.m. Fans can watch the post-game fireworks show from the outfield grass, but as always, on-field capacity is limited. Get your tickets today at athletics.com slash fireworks. This Friday, Angels in town. A's host the Padres Wednesday and Thursday. Wednesday night, Thursday afternoon. Friday night, fireworks at the Coliseum. And we hope it's just fireworks at the Coliseum. <laughs> Yes, yes, we do. We just would really like for the Warriors to win tomorrow night. That's right. Win in Cleveland. They've been a pretty good road team, haven't they? Yes, they have. But a A's game on a Friday night. Game seven of the NBA Finals right next door. An A team. And that's the most important thing of everything we're talking about. That one's belted to right center. Hit well. Kemp on the move. Venable on the move. Nobody's going to get it. Bounces up and over the wall and into the beach. That's what they call it out there. The beach. Deep right center field. So Muncie gets his first hit. And it's a booming double. But again, Max Muncie should pick his parts as far as the booming drives he's going to hit. He hit one in Oakland last Wednesday. Against the Rangers that skimmed the wall and here we go. Whoa, oh. easy big fella. At least if you're gonna do a splash, hit some water instead of sand. Check swing <laughs> out of the reach of Alonzo. <laughs> Simeon's gonna get himself a base hit and he will take it. It's been that kind of night for the Athletics. Check swing. Alonzo, the first baseman, missed catching it by just couple inches and Simeon has a hit and the A's have 13 hits now. Sam Full is going to get a chance to hit and well it's, it's not often you see a check swing like that and it ends up being a base hit and plus Max Muncy at second 12th infield hit that's, that's pretty impressive for Marcus Simeon showing his speed but Max Muncy could not go to third on the ball that was hit to the right side because it was in the air so long. So Sam Full, 208. Taps this one out in front. Norris hustles after it, throws, and Alonzo makes a nice play. Scary moment yesterday in Anaheim. Sam Fold, he had his hand wrapped after the game because of this. It's his right hand and had the hand securely on the bat. And got him on the top of the head. Maybe just enough that the Batting glove protected him a little bit because he he did have the hand wrapped, and he will stay in the game tonight. Pinch hit, which is always good. But it said he was a little bit concerned because of the number of small bones in that part of the hand. Does not get a sacrifice, but does the job of moving both runners up. Fernando Ababa. He's getting ready. Well, Billy Burns has a chance to do the same thing he did in his last at bat, last inning. Infield in. Huge gap between second and short, right over the pitcher. Get jammed and send a ball in center field again. Yep. This time, Amarista flips it to first, so Burns is retired. He's going to be disappointed. Even if the score is 9 1, you feel like there's an RBI That's sitting right. out there for you, almost handing it to you. Well, the A's had a chance fourth time tonight to have a runner at third, less than two outs, and had a chance to be perfect tonight. But looks a one in the column of not getting the runner in from third. So Sogard will have to do it with two outs. Sogard is one for four, and he bounces one. Alonzo comes in, grabs it on a big hop. Side retired. Couple of hits for the A's, but no run. So bottom of the ninth coming up. It's the A's with a nine to one lead.
Comcast Sportsnet California is brought to you by Toyota, the full-time automaker with the longest-lasting vehicles in America. Toyota, let's go places. And by Xfinity, home of the most live sports. But well, our Honda player of the game is right-hander Jesse Hahn as Hahn coming back to San Diego to pitch against his former team. And very deserving of the Honda player of the game as he goes six and two-thirds innings, three hits, a run, a couple of walks, four strikeouts, 94 pitches, and Jesse Hahn got some nice defensive plays behind him. Good pick at first by Max Muncy. And Jesse Hahn trying to get to his fourth win of the season as he has a nine-to-one lead and turn it over to Fernando Abad. Here in the bottom of the ninth inning. So here's Abad. 0 and 2 with a 5.52 ERA. It's his 25th game. So Bob Melvin using his lefties out of the bullpen tonight, trying to get him some work. Well, Flaherty through the eighth. Pomeran's got an out in the seventh, and now Abad here in the ninth. So he'll face Solarte, Camarista, and then the pitcher spot. We had a good comeback by O'Flaherty, who had not pitched that much. Had a little tough time throwing strikes. So, Fernando Abad, and now with the three lefties in the bullpen, like you said, all three pitching tonight, but spreading it around a little bit. And that enables Bob Melvin, Kurt Young, to maybe bring in a lefty earlier than he normally would. First pitch from Abad to Salarte is high. Salarte is 0 for 3. He's have out hit the Padres 13 to 4. And it's a final now in Anaheim. The Diamondbacks 7, the Angels 3. So the Diamondbacks beat Jared Weaver. Arizona's won four in a row. They just swept the Giants and then they go to Anaheim. You know, we don't follow the National League as much, obviously, as the American League, but Paul Goldschmidt. Oh. He had another home run and he's hitting 366 <laughs> with 18 home runs. I mean, he is a monster. Paul Goldschmidt. And they had Mark Trumbull to give it a little protection, but they traded him to Seattle. Yeah, he's the way he's hitting, I mean, he's in maybe a leading MVP candidate. Yeah. Check swing, rolled foul. And the Mariners beat the Giants 5 1, so the Giants are not playing well. They've lost five in a row. Seattle got a good pitching performance from Tawan Walker. Walker got the win, Hudson got the loss. Popped up foul. Hayes post game live coming up. Talk about tonight's ball game. He's three outs away from picking up an opening series win. And that's a shot to left field. Zobrist jumps up, makes the catch, one out. So Salarte not happy as he hit it right on the nose, but he's retired. Yeah, make sure you join us tomorrow. It will be a 1240 first pitch from Petco Park. Scott Casimir, Andrew Kashner. Kashner, a big, hard throwing right hander. So tune in right around 1240. And Comcast Sportsnet California for first pitch. That's a swing, says Adam Hamana. Casimir trying to even up his record at four and four against Kashner, who's got terrific stuff, but the ERA over four, and he's just two and eight. So one and two to Alexi Amarista. Austin Hedges is the on deck hitter. That's the pitcher spot. 
Hit up the middle off a of bod. And it's just out of the reach of Muncie. Sogard will pick it up in short right field. So let's hope a bot is okay. Well, he was hurrying over to cover first base in the event. Muncie came up with it, but limping a little bit as the way he turned around, squared himself up to the plate. He got him off the left foot as he followed through the side of the left foot. Got him a lot of the padding on his shoe. Phil looks like Abad's going to stay in the game. What hard? What horn is yeah. getting a lot of extra time tonight on TV because this is uh, second trip out for the assistant trainer as he came out for the Stephen Vogt. You know, when you start having those fingers going, how many fingers do you see? Yeah, you know, you don't want to do that. <laughs> hey, Walt gives him the nod. Yeah. Okay. See, Walt worries about everybody. He's just a good yeah. assistant trainer. I mean, if you cough a little bit on the plane, yeah. he looks at you like, you okay? What do you need? He takes care of everybody. Yeah. And almost took one for the team with a ball that came into the <laughs> dugout. Line drive, and he pointed it, put up a thumb and fingers at just that much. Vucevic on the on the bench, the celebratory Vuce. It's always good to see Vuce on the yeah, bench with yeah. a nine to one lead. <laughs> Probably lit up a rally Thogi after yeah, after likes, vote hit the grand slam. He likes to be out there yeah. when there's a pretty good chance the A's <laughs> are going to win. <laughs> Keep an eye on that dugout when the A's are down in the night. That's right. Well, he'll have so his need boost the most. He'll have his rally stogie going. <laughs> I pop up foul. This is Austin Hedges, young catcher for the Padres. Very highly thought of prospect in the big leagues for the first time this year. One and one the count to Hedges. Change up and a good one just floated up there and Hedges missed it. Great, great change up by Fernando Abad, the old Bucks Bunny change up, and it's a good job. And so for the A's relievers, a very good job. And talking to Tyler Clippert after the game yesterday, and he was about a pitch or two away from coming out of the game in the ninth inning and throwing as many as he did, but the one thing he was talking about is the importance of pitching his normal game. And here's a closer getting some work in and a game kind of out of control. The A's had the lead and he needed the work, so he asked to get the work. But he said, I'm going to pitch my normal game, even though there's a lead. I'm not going to just give up hits and runs. So another change up, actually, three in a row from a Fernando Abad, and he gets a strikeout. And see through. Three, actually two good change-ups, swing and a miss, and then the one that just missed. But it's important for relievers because they pitch so infrequently, and the number of innings total are not usually that high to make sure that they pitch their normal game. There's Venable who takes a strike. Amarista goes to second base, so he's now there with two outs. In fact, we're hearing a lot of "Let's go Oakland." There are a lot of oh, A's fans. In San Diego, people actually took the trip down for the weekend. Big time. Yeah, to see the A's and the Angels and then on to San Diego. And well, if you think about it, Ray, I mean, you know, they play the Angels every year, and I'm sure a lot yeah. of A's fans they go to Anaheim every year, even Seattle. But here's a chance to go to a great city, great yeah. ballpark that you don't go to very often. Yeah. So I'm not surprised at all that there's this many A's fans down. There's some authentic fans down here yeah. too, right there. He's got the same. It's great to see the green and gold down here at Petco Park. Swing and a miss, and that's the ball game. So the A's win it tonight by a final score of 9-1. to one. They score a bunch late, including a grand slam by Stephen Vogt. I think we should talk to Stephen Vogt. I hope he wants to talk to us. I hope his head's okay. Because we want to talk to him. So the final score tonight from Petco Park.
The Oakland A's defeat the San Diego Padres by a final score of 9 to 1. You've been watching A's baseball on Comcast Sportsnet California. Don't go away. A's post game live with Brody Brazil and Bip Roberts starts right now.